YouTube. I got a knife. I'm gonna cut this thing open. It looks like a giant garbage bag, but it's not, technically. Wow. What do we have here? Is something new, very exciting. And notwithstanding what you've seen in the thumbnail, oh my goodness, it looks exciting. The Fragili tag is kind of making my cut open experience oh. pretty good, so. All right, here we go, guys. This is gonna be different and exciting. I've actually been wanting to do this for several weeks now, but we've had other obligations that were in front of it. Are you kidding me? Look at this, it's the F14 fatty. What? Kind of rude. Larger person, I think. Does this have retracts? I didn't know it had retracts, that's awesome. Oh, really? Totally cool. It has a six axis gyro. I didn't know that. 4S LiPo battery operated. It's a plug and play. Wow, amazing. Pusher set up with eight inch prop. So this is not EDFs guys. This is a prop. Now, this is kind of a weird one because we, I don't know. We're not exactly sure what our relationship is with this company, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this thing and we're gonna see how awesome it is or not. And I'm kind of excited for it because it looks just like so different than our usual not fatty model. <laughs> and there's a whole community of fatties out there. This feels really hard. <laughs> I don't know if I can say that. Um, there's a whole community of people that do this in the world of RC and they wanna have more of it available. And so I've always thought them and I've seen them and thought that is so weird and yet Strangely satisfying given that it's an F14. So I was, I'm like got a huge sweet spot for F14s like in my heart. What am, I missed a piece of tape somewhere? Um. So I don't know how this is gonna go. This could be a total victory. It could be a total collapse. Oh, oh there's stuff up there. There's stuff up stuff there, up I think. There. Okay, so I, I think you have to cut this here too. Cause there's, well, is there? Yeah, there's definitely stuff up oh. there. Okay, so be careful when you're unboxing. Normally our unboxings are pretty, pretty much the same thing every time. And so Megan and I have been talking about this, thinking how can we make this make, how can we make this the best experience possible for you guys, which we're always talking about. I know it probably doesn't seem like that because it's pretty much the same stuff all the time in our opinion, but we forget we've added lab mics. That was, that was, that was one upgrade up in the world. that Go people ahead. beat us over the heads with for how many years? Why the people like, are here. About two years. Oh, okay, so definitely open the top. I didn't know that was for sure gonna happen, but here we are. So one of the things we wanted to do is wanted to talk about experience level at the beginning of our unboxes because some of you guys are gonna be watching thinking, go slower, go faster, whatever. And it's just, to be frank, it's impossible for us to know exactly who the audience is gonna be. It could be a bunch of you know, really experienced pilots that are watching. It could be a bunch of new pilots that are watching. We really don't know until it happens. And even then we still kind of, whoa, that's weird. Okay, so I'm wondering if they just like cut the packaging off of this to make it lighter or something. I don't know what, this feels like it's possibly a box. Oh. But yeah, so you see how it's two layers? So mm -hmm. I don't know if they just repacked this one or what the deal is. Um, but I'm actually super excited to do this and I wanted to come up with a way that I could explain to you guys at the beginning who I'm you know, talking to. Am I talking to the beginner pilot? Am I talking to the experienced pilot? Of course, we have some instructions here. And I think on this one, we're gonna be somewhere between intermediate to experienced. I don't even know if I can put myself in the boat of experience because we've only been doing this for so many years. Let's look at this real quick. Okay. This is probably not a beginner plane though. I assume this is not a beginner plane, but you know, maybe it is. Does it come with epoxy? Mm -hmm. Okay. Looks pretty straightforward. Oh, it's got full functioning televators. Sweet. 10 millimeters up and down, we don't do that. Okay, so it looks like pretty straightforward stuff. They have a CG line somewhere on there. So I have to assume that the CG is gonna be really specific on this plane because it's not very long. You run the risk of being way off by slight deviations in positioning. Okay, so there is a little bit more assembly involved in this than some other planes we've done. So it looks like that might be a motor mount. Okay, I wanna just, ooh, look at these shorties. Wow, amazing. That is really cool. We've got the ordinance here. And there's, feel how light that is. It's like nothing. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. It is. Um, okay, so we're just gonna keep going. Of course, we got more ordinance here. Don't forget to pull the ordinance out. We don't typically fly with ordnance, but maybe on this one, we're just gonna go 
all in at the beginning. Okay, so that was the motor mount that I saw. That is really cool, actually. So it's like so strange. The whole thing? Look. That's so weird. I mean, it's, it's really <laughs> cool, actually. I love the fact that it's like short and super small. Okay, for commercial use only, push, what is that for commercial purposes? Squeeze the handle to jettison. Is it supposed to be in English? I don't know. I'm wondering if it, it's like a mistranslation. But it just looks really cool, actually. I couldn't tell from outside how, look, it's like you could totally put EDFs in there. I wonder if they're going to offer this with EDFs at some point, because right now it there's definitely totally retracts. Like but the thing is, the way they've designed this one, this is going to go on there and the motor is going to actually be on it. So I'm not sure how this is going to work. Plus this is a plug and fly model, which means there is a motor somewhere. Oh, there's the ESC. Okay. Comes with, in this case, looks like they provided this with, I'm trying to be careful, lay that down. It's really stout though. This has got an EC3 on it. And that looks like a 40 amp, two through four S LiPo, five volts, uh, three amp U back. So that's pretty cool. Okay. So let's just double check. Is that one empty? Okay. Totally empty. We'll just put this down there. I love the way this looks though. I didn't know how the finish was gonna be. And look at the finish. Mm -hmm. It's actually really nice. There's only a few of these mold bumps. Here, let's go over here in the light so they can see what I'm talking about. These little bumps, normally they're really distracting and they've got those to a minimum. The pilots are a little bit uggo and that blocks a lot of your view. It's kind of cool, but I think that's what the, it's part of the shtick. It's all you know? kind of like cartoony, right? Yeah. Right, but I love how they have that forward-facing uh, radar, radar thing. Of course, nose gears, that's really cool. I didn't know this was gonna have retracts. I thought it was just gonna be a belly lander. Yeah. So I'm actually super thrilled to see that. Because who wants to see a jet with landing gear, right? I guess I was assuming it was gonna be fixed gear. Who wants to see a jet with landing gear? Right. Down. You could take them off. I do have a sweet spot for retracts on jets. But sometimes it's just, they're trying to hit a certain budget item, these manufacturers, and they, they put that budget item as one of the top reasons to do this or that. I don't see a motor in here though. I'm trying to, still, have, did you well, see a motor anywhere? I mean, there's stuff in a couple of these pockets. Okay, so, so. this is just a weird unbox. Oh yeah. yes, I see it now. It's right here, it's under this thing. So these are like pieces of foam, but it's really stiff foam. So it must be a different style because it actually holds the whole thing together. And then there's, uh, horizontal stabilizers under here and then those must be the horizontal stabilizers and then the vertical oh no those are the rudders so it's the vertical stabilizers it's kind of hard to tell on this because the nature of the shape right that is super super cool it looks like no that's the wing yeah is that the wing yeah wait is that the wing that is totally the wing okay so no sweep wing design and i think i kind of already knew that um, by the way, look at the color code on that. That's an interesting way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Never seen that before. Okay, so this is just a different thing we've never seen before. And uh, the vertical stabilizers, yeah, there is no rudder on this. That's what I was trying to figure out. I thought maybe these were the vertical stabs because they're about, I think the vertical stabs are about the same size as the main wing. It's all a weird proportion now. Yep. But anyway, I, I knew about this for what, five or six weeks, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit longer. And it's just kind of like one day it just showed up. And so I'm not sure if this thing's gonna be like zero or hero, but I'm actually really excited for it. It's gonna be a super fun plane. And I kind of love the fact that it's really small. Like we don't have a lot of really small planes, but it's like a really small plane that's not really small. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, it's just kind of a different thing. Of course, we got another, um, another aileron. And it looks like, look, they used metal ball bearings. Oh. Or not ball bearings, sorry guys, ball links. Ball links. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is just something we're not used to seeing. It's a little strange. Um, well, it's just brass, I guess. Technically, the other ones are probably metal, but a lot of times they get painted in the jigging. So that's definitely one of the Televons. So that's gonna go back here. And then it's got like a plastic, there'll be a, a tube. The way that they kept gap here, is they just have a protrusion in the plastic and then the shaft is going to go in there and it sits on this like bearing surface so there's actually a pretty wide gap there i like that because we've seen problems with that before on other much more expensive models but honestly guys okay so full functioning televator not full functioning televator 
some people had mentioned they wanted to see a full functioning Televator on that plane. Oh. And to be honest, I kind of agree with them. However, I must say, I'm sure this prop is gonna work fine, but man, couldn't you do like two sweet little pseudo EDF jets? Because you could do small props inside of there. How sweet would that be? That would be cool. But anyway, again, I don't wanna tear this apart too much because it could be like amazing. And I'm sure that the guys that put all the engineering into this had thought about all the different things. They probably wanted to have EDFs and ended up like throwing their budget by like three times more than they wanted to spend on it. And okay, so we got some good solid CNC uh bogeys these must be the mains i don't see the nose gear yet oh the nose gears inside you don't have to install the nose gear i love that it's in a bag very rock hard look at that there's no camp there's no keeper on there oh that's because they have a set on the bottom you see the set mm. i was thinking there would need to be a c um a c clip yeah, yeah i'm gonna take it out of there okay. i'm sorry it's just i have to cut it it's actually thick plastic I'm sorry, camera crew. You should have warned me earlier. I just wanted to see them. Yeah. I, oh, they're spring loaded. Yes, and they didn't do a huge spring. I love it. This is really cool. I mean, super creative stuff and set screw and set screw. Good call. Because by the time you get that on there, it's gonna be, you know, you'll, you'll be able to interchange them now, which is nice. There is a right way, I think, because the spring, let's see if the left and right are identical. And what I'm talking about being identical is this. Yep, they are identical. So one's gonna have the spring loaded this way, one's gonna have the spring loaded that way. So what's gonna happen is one of those is gonna become inaccessible on the plane when the, when the retracts are pulled up. Mm. Cause they just kinda like sit under the wing. All right guys, if I'm jumping around, that's because this is an unusual unbox for us. We usually kinda work our way through. Let's look at the motor real quick. You know, I never, this whole time I've been doing this hobby, I never got into unboxes myself. I always thought the unboxes were just kind of like somewhat wasted time. But I know a lot of you guys love it because you get to see the quality and workmanship up close. Okay, so enjoy to fly. 2217, so that's 22 millimeters this way by 17 millimeters that way. I think I might be getting that backward. And then this is, um, that says, Fetty place, I can't read it. 1100 KV, so that's 11, th or 1100 rotations per volt. Okay. It says fatty something. Oh, does it say fatty? Fatty teeny or something like that? Fatty, oh, fatty planes. Oh. But there's kind of like a mark in the Yeah, writing. it's like a gouge or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so the other uh, vertical, or oh, horizontal stabilator. Okay, so I gotta get around here so I can cut these out. This of course will be our vertical stabilizers. I'm always bummed to not see rudders, but to be honest on this type of a stout aircraft, my guess is you won't get a lot of yaw effect. You'll just get a lot of roll effect, especially with a tall vertical plane. Mm -hmm. You have so much of that becomes a rotational energy. It's not a yaw uh, in most cases, although it is, it is really a nice thick surface. And I mean, you could, you could probably get that thing to house a rudder just fine. I don't see why you wouldn't. I love the tail art. Really nicely applied decals. Mm -hmm. It's really pretty. That's super cool. Okay. All right, so this build, I think this build is gonna be a deceptively easy. Like it looks like it could be hard, but I'm kind of thinking it's gonna go quick. I hope so. Well, let's see how the instructions are. Well, that's true, but I don't need instructions. I don't need no stinking right. instructions. Sorry, I, I would rather struggle through and tell 10,000 people the wrong way how to do it. Okay. First. I'll read the instructions for you. The camera crew has offered to read the instructions. Okay. I don't know, I have to decide. Oops, I folded it wrong. Yep, I'm kind of not sure if I should just unfold that. It's kind of a cool thing. Normally when we undo our boxes, the foam is the first thing to go for us here at Brian Phillips RC because we just have a plethora of cases. But do you want to set it up on the back so we can look at the picture while we're building? You know what? Camera crew always has great ideas. That's a great idea. Let's put it here on the uh, flammable surface. Perfect. What could possibly go wrong? Absolutely nothing. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the uh, instruction manual here. Oh, I left a couple foam pieces. The instruction manual, the camera crew's gonna just kind of scan through that real quick for you. It does say right here, 
Flight characteristics of the fatty plane is different to normal aircraft. Flying habits may need to be readapted. Keep the throttle at least 50% during flight. Yep, don't let it stall on you. Okay. Because you got to keep the wing. Hmm, go ahead. Gliding landing is not suitable. Keep at least yep. 30 to 50% throttle when landing. Okay. Slowly reduce power when you're close to the ground. Mm -hmm. Dual rates for aileron and elevator is recommended at first flight. Okay, we'll do all that crap. Okay. So. So in other words, you have to know how to fly it. Oh, do you want to get a battery? Oh yeah, good idea. What do they suggest? 4S? 4S? 26 to 3300. Jeez, 3300. Are they serious? That seems like a really big How about this? Battery. How about this? We got a 27 4S, 2700 4S, S155. If you're only doing 4S is a great option. Super cheap, 55 watts, single channel does all the smart setup you can need. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, also firmware up upgradable with the USB-C, which is nice. That is an improvement from the S2200 but the S2200 is two 200 watt um, chargers and bigger screen, better, although our screen broke free from the front, full disclosure, and I love that you can switch between the different types of connectors, even on the S155, although I think that's major overkill for 4S packs. We only have one 4S pack that has an uh, IC5 and that would be 5,000 4S. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's topping off, and then what do you think, 3200? Yeah. 3,200 it is. We'll just top these off. Now, one thing that over the course of using these smart packs, we used to use almost exclusively Turnigy packs. Now, we had reasonably good luck for about two to three seasons on Turnigy packs before they were just like fatties, like this airplane. And part of the rationale for having such bad luck is that I always charged them ahead of time. And we also set our discharge time to 240 hours, the longest period you can set on your smart packs because we charge them and then for like a roughly a week and a half we have charge and we're ready to fly like right now mm -hmm. because that's what we get we get drop of the hat like today it's super windy yep. and so my experience so far with smart packs has been super good yes we have about five or six that have like died of natural causes not me crashing them <laughs> um or there's a, well, there's probably six or seven that have died of natural causes, meaning me crashing. But then the unnatural causes like having one cell that's failed or puffing more ex extensively than I expect, I'd say three or four maybe, that are pretty bad. Maybe. We had like one that was weird. It was shipped, it was low. Um, we try not to bug Horizon about stuff like that when there's issues um, just because of the nature of our relationship. But the thing is, if you ever would get one that's like a DOA like that, you just get a replacement. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. Thing is, our 4S, or excuse me, our 6S 4000s have been by far the most chewed through packs out of our batch. Yeah. I don't know why that is. Um, it might just be a fluke in that particular engineering run because we kind of got those pretty early. Also, we reviewed shortly after that the F-18 70 right the or was that an 80 that was an 80 is that an 80 it's an 80 mm -hmm. yeah the um the blue angels one mm -hmm. awesome plane a little bit underpowered i would say or not maybe underpowered but like barely powered the right amount barely i want my jets to be overly powerful that's one of the reasons why i don't mind the pusher prop setup on this um but anyway getting back to the point on the f-18 we had to really push those batteries hard. So they got to run for their money. Mm -hmm. And when in reality, that F-18 probably needed a five or 7,000. It just wouldn't fit, I don't think. And the bigger packs would really help because there's something about having more milliamp hours in the capacity that helps to prevent the puffing. I know you guys are saying, no, that's not how it works, Brian. It's all about the C rating. No, it's about the C rating in combination with capacity. If you don't have capacity to deliver, then you're gonna have problems too. Just take it from personal experience. And I have destroyed a lot of batteries. I'm sure you guys might have destroyed more, but I still have destroyed a lot myself. <laughs> so anyway, we have been very happy with our experience. They were wonderful packs. If you buy five Turnigy's, they're gonna be dead in the time it takes you to kill uh, 0.25 smart packs. So the, the price point is significantly higher, but you're gonna end up just having a better experience throughout. And you're gonna have a lot longer flight times. Yeah. Because the auto balancing, 
especially on the Gen 2 has been phenomenal because you'll go up there and you'll get into like a sag on one of the cells and like it'll correct if you glide for a little bit and then you've got that juice for landing, which is really nice. Okay, so ESC, we didn't really look at this super close. Throttle is marked and uh, so everything looks good there. Just kind of going through the bags now before we get into the assembly. Assembly is not gonna be hard on this. I don't think it's gonna be a big deal at all. Looks like we just have to glue a couple of small points. And I don't see any included glue. I don't either, but you know what? I think what it is, uh, what is this? Hmm. Hmm. How do you open the canopy? Uh, or does the canopy even open? I'm wondering. I assume it does. How, you, how else are you gonna get the battery in? Oh, so this is an X-Fly model. Oh, very interesting. Hmm, very strange. Oh, it's a Pulsar, guys. So maybe it has the wheel out. Oh. Yep, it sure does. Pulsar, okay? Interesting. Interesting. So it is an X-Fly product. Strange how that works. Well, hmm. or at least sharing a <laughs> stabilizer with them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and ironically enough, we had an X-Fly we did just the other day and we were actually working on that next too. Um, and that is an X-Fly J65. And it was right. awesome. I have never gotten that one right. I, was, I just can't seem to get it right. Oh, this, so this actually gets trapped inside of here. It gets trapped inside of here. And then this just slides in there, I guess, or I don't know. Nope, you can get in here and actually hold it too. Get your retention oh. clip. See, there's a place where you'll be able to get a retainer on huh. inside the nacelle. Okay, so that's kind of a different setup. I've never seen that before, but I like it. And I don't want to put on the vertical stabilizers first. I want to have these done because then we can glue stuff. It'll be a lot easier, I think. Okay. So why don't we start with these? Um, oh, we never did open this. This is a motor mount adapter, it looks like. I don't really understand that at all. Where does that go? Does that go here? Spaces it out a little bit, maybe? I don't know. Well, it's made of carbon fiber, so. And then we have the uh, Televon, or not Televon, but uh, Televators. Now, the other thing is, I'm kind of torn on this. If we're using a Pulsar stabilizer, I wonder if we're gonna want to have ailerons and Televons, or if we're gonna wanna have Televons and then flaps like legit flaps, not flapperons. But those are so little. <sighs> yeah, they are really little because that's not a huge surface. Mm -mm. And by the compared to the, the scope of the aircraft, I wonder if that's necessary. And if they're talking about needing throttle to land, maybe yeah. you don't want to be going really slow. Well, that, well, you still, flaps do not necessarily make you go slow. They can slow you down. I don't know, it's just a different plane, so I don't want to get the wrong wrong decision here, yeah. but how does this come off? Oh, it just comes straight up. Okay, I just pulled it up. Oh, and look, they have little plugs you can pull out and replace the pilots, that's cool. Okay, the Pulsar's in there, but it's loose. It's got a piece of double-sided tape included. Uh, it looks like it fell off, actually. I think it fell off, because it's like Ooh, it's stuck. St stuck. Okay, I don't think that's the way it's supposed to be. I think that was a mistake. See this? Yeah, it's pulling the adhesive, but I think I can still make that work without having to totally replace it. Okay, so I'm not sure we have, what the heck is that? Oh, that's gear. So it must be a sequencer. That's a sequencer for the different uh, landing gear, I guess. Because why do, oh, it's for the gear door, for the nose door. Because mm. there's gear door, yeah. Okay, and there's two servos up front. There's actually three up front, what the heck? Why is there three servos up front? Oh, gear door one, gear door two, nose gear. That makes sense. Okay. And then the battery is supposed to go up here. So I think this Pulsar is actually supposed to be maybe back here. Well, there's that piece of 3M tape back there. I know, I'm trying to figure that out. Maybe that's just for your receiver. Which way is the Pulsar supposed to be? Ooh, I don't know. Do you have a picture in it? That's a bummer. Um. The Pulsar is supposed to point forward, I think. But you can calibrate it. Okay, so standard connection, S bus, delta wing, gang adjust. Okay, so flight modes, calibrate function, designed. Okay, this is designed for uh, airplane level calibration. Mount the gyro in place and put the airplane on a flat surface. Power on the airplane and wait for it self check. Uh, press the button and hold for three seconds. 
release the button, the control surfaces will oscillate upward and downward for a few times, which means the calibration is complete. Level calibration will aff affect if the plane level out attitude is correct or not in balance mode, okay? So, huh, I don't know where that was supposed to be. I'm sorry guys, I'm not sure. I don't wanna tell you wrong, but I think I'm just gonna kinda throw caution to the wind and get it stuck down, cause I don't wanna fight it. I really don't know where it's supposed to be, but I'm just gonna go here. Whatever, it is what it is. Um, okay, so that means that really on this one, we have retracts, ailerons, and or aileron two, and or Telebon one, Telebon two, rudder for steerable nose gear, and what else? Throttle. Throttle. So five, six, seven, max. Mode eight. Oof. Or alternatively, you could do, th oh, I already did throttle. I already did throttle at the beginning. Throttle, aileron left, aileron right, Telebon left, Telebon right, uh, gear and mode. So I guess that'd be seven. So not eight, but seven. If you did all individual control surfaces. Now, if you did it, alternatively, you could do throttle, uh, rudder, aileron, just like usual. Um, and then mode, but then yeah, throttle, elevator, rudder, ailerons, mm -hmm. mode. Yep. So five. So you can get it done with a six channel receiver still with retracts. But if you do flap runs, then you need throttle. And I don't know if flap runs is supported on the Pulsar. That's one thing. Let's come over here and look. Gain and direction adjustment, auxiliary function for front gear, flight modes. Okay. This mode delivers wind resistance. Okay. Calibration function, attention, S bus. Okay. So. Aileron servo, elevator, rudder, and then steering servo. So the way that I have historically done flap rons when using an external stabilizer is I use, see they have delta wing and then they have S bus. So you have to indicate S bus and you have to indicate delta wing. So delta wing, do they say anything about delta wing? Okay, three way wires to the corresponding pins of the receiver. S bus connection, ugh, gain and direction adjustment. That's all, that's pretty simple stuff. I just don't think you can do a typical flap run on this. So we're gonna have to do standard ailerons, standard elevator, standard rudder. Now, if you wanted to go with a uh, stabilized receiver, you could eliminate the Pulsar altogether, similar to what we did on the J65. Mm -hmm. And then you would end up with full flight function from a seven channel receiver, excuse me, a six channel, like AR637T would give you full telemetry. Then you would not just fly by, then you would get flaperons, elevator, okay, flaperons, elevator, rudder, throttle. Yeah, no you wouldn't. Oh, cause you, your modes are on top. So throttle, elevator, rudder, flaperons, and then the modes could be on the top, right? Did I miss any? Oh, retracts. Oh. So there's your, there's your sixth. So if you did an AR637, you could do the full suite of flap runs and regular tail function, okay? But you're not gonna have this, you're gonna have that. The other thing you do, this is another trick if you guys decide to do this. You could actually run, and this is something we did on the Cessna Citation Longitude, which is over there, show them that, the UMX. Mm -hmm. That plane has the ailerons driving the steerable nose gear. And therefore you end up with saving a channel, but I'm not 100% sure how that would work when you deploy flap rons, it's gonna jerk to one side or the other. So you can only do that if it's strictly ailerons. So if you did Telebons, then you could do flaps on your, on your actual wings. So flaps, flat mode, Telebon, delta wing, supported, okay? Or you treat this as delta wing, and then you use a regular elevator. No, because that's gonna be inboard. I don't know if that'll work on the, 
the front to back. Oh man, there's so many different ways you can do this. Okay, we're just gonna build it like a standard plane. Sorry guys, I gotta think these things through. And the reason we share this process of thinking things through is because we wanna teach you how to think things through. That doesn't mean that you have to think things through in the same way we do. If you're a beginner pilot, let me just pump the brakes for a minute for you. Do not get this plane. You won't like it, you'll crash it immediately, okay? It's gonna be more advanced based on what we read. I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say that right now. You've already seen me fly it. Hopefully it didn't end in a big disastrous crash, although that could happen and you know we don't have um, our crystal balls working anymore. Anymore? We did? Evidently. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do something right now too because it was awkward to pull that up. Now this is gonna pull the paint off if I don't get it right, so I'm gonna get it right. Okay, so I'm just put a clear piece of tape here, stick it down, and then I'm gonna put this up a little bit so I can fold this tail. Ah, I got a nasty curve in it. See, now I've got a piece of tape so I can actually pull, pull that out easily okay I don't want to fight to get my canopy off mm -hmm. okay anyway getting back to the point we're gonna build this thing and then we can play around because honestly the wires are gonna be pretty easy to pass through I assume which uh, you put them into the vertical slot then is that how that works the wire passes through the slot okay we had a plane that was like that at one point I can't remember what plane it was it's been a long time since we did it but I do remember having a plane like that. And then is this gonna fit on the plane stand even because Ooh. of the nature of its shape? <laughs> it might be an awkward one for the plane stand actually. Yeah, because the plane stand would normally depend on the certain length of fuselage. You can adjust these, but we found it to be really hard to adjust. Some guys had suggested to us that we, uh, you know, like lubricate these shafts with something. Oh, son of a gun, it's just too short. Like almost there. Maybe we'll pause and see if we can adjust and come right back. I totally forgot. I, we, we had to pause for an interruption and then there was oh. that thing in there and I think they're, uh, they look like ventral fins. Oh. So they were in one of these that pockets and teeny. really hard to see. Yeah. So definitely double check. Whenever we get interrupted, I always like clean up while we're between takes. Um, okay, so we also got an XPC battery checker, which also serves as a servo tester, which we're gonna use that for servo testing today. And that's so we can open the retracts at some point. So we'll be ready when we need to. Um, the instructions go through a series of installation steps as they see fit. We're just gonna do it the wrong way as usual here on Brian Just do it the way you see fit. Whatever, we always get them done, don't we? <laughs> And I did adjust this in a little bit, but I'm just, like, I don't know if I can like trust right it. Right on the edge. Right on the edge. Okay. Um, okay, so let's talk about the Telvons real quick because I, I am concerned we're not gonna be able to get them in. I am gonna Loctite these to here. I don't know because it's going through plastic. I just was thinking about that earlier when I was grabbing stuff out of our drawers. Oh. Okay, so these are the collars. There's one extra set screw it looks like, so we'll be super careful not to lose that. There's a total of five of those keepers, okay? So the way this works, this is the same as all the other ones we've ever done. These are all the same. So the way this works is you slide the shaft. You actually just drop this into position, just like this. Ugh, it's kind of awkward. Okay, so you slide that down and then you get the shaft lined up and then you slide this through the shaft comes in then you get to the flat spot, grab your nut driver, which in my, I think it's a 1.5 millimeter. Let's see if that goes in. Oh yeah, 1.5. Okay, then you can just screw this in. And that allows, okay, this to then be pivoting. Uh, of course I picked the wrong side. I've got to do both, so we'll do this real quick. So it's gonna, it's gonna slide through the foam and it's gonna line up there, okay? And we're gonna do the same thing on the inside of the aircraft as well. You do have to kind of push this through with the accessible screw there. And so one trick you can do that really does help quite a bit is if you think about it, go ahead and get this started. 
get a couple of turns in, make sure you don't protrude into the center, and then you can use that to kind of control it into the position mm -hmm. to the slot. Then once you're in the slot, problem is then you lose your visibility to see if you're actually in or not. There it is, it's in. See when I can see the, I think it's kind of the double-edged sword right there. I'm gonna take that back out now that I have it in position, I guess. Because I can't see if so I've got good enough see. penetration. Oh, okay, I gotcha. See, it's barely in there. And I'm just looking for a surface that I can hold and push. I'm gonna try to use the same tools so it's easier, but see how I'm holding this? I'm pushing. Don't wanna overshoot it, and it'll just go right through your wing if you're not careful. And then this flat is the same as that flat, so you should be able to just tighten that whenever you have alignment. Now, since that's metal to metal, you could actually use a set screw there, or you could use uh, Loctite on that. It's just whenever it comes into contact with plastic, you'll run into problems. Okay, so then the way this works is this drops in, this, this slides in here, okay? Okay, so obviously that's gonna move free, and the linkage will go from here to here. But then what you do is get those um, retained the same exact way from the inside of the tailpipe. But I'm not sure how I'm gonna reach this because if you look from the end here, I have to be able to put this in inside oh, of there. Really? Yep, and then you can pivot this and you can run your screwdriver in and get that set, okay? Mm. So as you can see, you're not gonna be able to use just any tool to reach that. And so I think I'm gonna try using forceps. And if you guys don't already have a set of forceps, a really long set of needle nose pliers might work. And then should we use mucilage or foam to foam today? Let's bring them both out just okay. in case. We have foam to foam and we have mucilage. Mucilage is cheaper, but it does tend to come dry sometimes and I don't like that. That really irritates me. Uh, Cause it's not super expensive, it's actually cheap, but I don't know if I necessarily trust it as far as I can throw it because it's a Hobby King product. And we have had very loose affiliations with Hobby King over the years and uh, for good reason, because we just don't know if we can trust them. Okay, so show the people, that actually was not hard. But then how do you know if you're Oh, on son of a biscuit lover. The flat. Watch, you'll know. We're just gonna, I'm gonna grab that real quick. And I'll grab the other one, how about that? So, did you guys see what happened? I was waiting for the camera crew and then I dropped it. So I'm gonna hold it like this. That works really good. I'm just gonna get it on there by any means possible. It's not hard, it's just kind of awkward. And then I'm just spinning. Can you see? Can yeah, I'm just zoomed in. There's the flat. So now I just need to like do it. I can't try to be yep. nice about showing it off. Okay, I was trying to give you a good angle. But that's what, that was my fatal flaw. You can tell where the flat is because it's flat just like this oh, is. Oh, okay. okay, yeah, I see that. Okay, so that's tight, tight like a toyga. And then your linkage is gonna keep it from coming out. I mean, you don't wanna depend on right. the linkage. Um, okay, so where'd the other it one It was go? right in front of your toe. Oh my goodness, it's way under there. Good thing. All right, so same exact scenario on the other side. <sighs> it just makes me think it's gonna be cool when we have another F-14 to do. Because mm. I love F-14s. You do. Do we have to watch Top Gun tonight now? Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Can we watch it while we're doing this? Again. Well, what do you mean again? We just watched it like a week and a half ago. Yeah, so it's like I need to see it again, obviously. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you guys, but I can watch Top Gun like 100 times. And I'd be totally fine with it. Yep. It's one of the few movies I could watch 100 times and still enjoy it. Okay, so I, hmm. yeah, that, that got to be in a little bit rammy. Oh. Did you see that? Jeez. Yeah, seriously. A little more gentle there. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, maybe we've got a little bit of an issue there. Maybe some paint on it. Let's go ahead and grab the shaft and try pulling it out. Ooh, ugh, that makes me a little nervous. Okay, I'm taking this over to the surgical station, also known as the uh, couch. <laughs> I'm gonna stick this between the couch cushions so I can hold it up because I wanna see what's going on and okay. show them what I'm doing. Okay. Right there, see that? Mm -hmm. Because that's spinning free. Hold the plane with one hand, please. Mm -hmm. 
What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to walk that out. Okay, you're not gonna, I got it with my arm. Because I wanna just go ahead and take this. I don't know if I maybe didn't get in the flats. Is it possible? No, I'm definitely 100% on the flat. Okay, so that's on there. And we don't care if that really wiggles. That's not gonna hurt us. It just needs to be able to spin free on this shaft. So I'm gonna go ahead and have you hold that just so it doesn't fall. And I really don't wanna mar the finish of this at all because that's just gonna create a lot of resistance for movement. So I'm gonna just do my very best to get this out of here without damaging it. Okay, there it is. So now, Okay, so I don't see anything especially weird in there. So I wonder if I just need to take, hold that please. Another screwdriver or something. Okay, look, I'm gonna spin it. Can you hold that? Mm -hmm. See if I can go in there with, uh, that's too big. Three millimeters is too big. Two millimeters is probably too small. I don't really feel anything seems, weird in there. Yeah. Seems like it's pretty clean. Two and a half millimeters. I'm just gonna kind of work it. This is octagonal, so it's gonna create some friction in case there's just like a little bit of schmutz in there. I don't really see anything. Okay, if you can, I'm just gonna carry this back. And I can't help but feel like there's a better way of holding this thing. It is a little bit awkward. Yeah, I didn't think having a fatty would be such a big deal. Speaking of, I just wonder if we need to lube this. Let's just lube it, that's a good idea. Okay. I'm just gonna put, this is just, just Dawn dish detergent, okay? And then a little bit of water. And I'm just gonna lube my shaft. Here, would you help me lube my shaft? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, good. It's always funner with help. All right, so here we go. Let's see if we can get this in the hole. Oh boy, ooh boy, ooh, there it is. What the heck? is the situation. Oh, there it is, uh, except it's not. See? Is it still pushing? Yeah, do you yeah. see? What the heck am I doing wrong? Ah! I feel like I'm catching an edge or something. Can you take that off? I mean, I've stuck things in holes before, honey. I know, but. Like more than once. Sometimes you have to try a different way. A different angle? Yeah, except I don't think that's the case here. I think you should take this off and see if uh, you can just get the shaft through. You want me to just ram the shaft in? Yeah. Okie dokie, I see how this goes. Okay, I'm gonna take this shaft off. So now I should be able to pull this out. If you wanted to film over here, you might be able to see what's going on. The shaft looks fine. Let's lay it on a flat surface. It's totally straight. I do not understand what I'm doing wrong here. See that? It's like, it doesn't wanna go. There it goes but it doesn't feel like it's gonna go through, so I'm gonna have to do this. I use this in my hand, just as something to press hard against, okay? I've got my finger out of the way. Now, this doesn't have to necessarily spin free. Oh, jeez. Goodness gracious. How the heck? Okay, so it's in there now, it seemed to be fine okay, at this point. Okay, so now that we've done that, I think the wise thing to do would be to grab the shaft and spin it like here, just so I can get to the flats, okay? And then I know what direction the, the rod needs to go. So I wanna kinda, this is not all the way in. It's very close, but it's not all the way. I'm gonna slide this side, it went in just fine. See? Mm -hmm. No problems at all. Oh, that's weird. Oh, I dinged it. Dang it. Let's see if we can get a partial bite and then pivot. Yep, it's pivoting, but I don't have the flat. The camera crew is like tripping in way of me today. This is something that happens sometimes when you film. And it's very hard to explain but it's like when you're building something and you know you've got somebody that's like right where you need to be, mm -hmm. it's super frustrating and hard to explain. Because that person's trying to see what you're building yeah, exactly. and doing. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, all those things. Um, okay, so now this one's just a little bit tougher because of the unusual 
circumstance there. So I've got my keeper set there. I just kind of hold this in approximately the right spot. It should be pretty easy to put this one on because the shaft isn't going to move at all. Okay, so now I can take my tool and just kind of walk up into the hole. Because of course it's heavier down there with that little piece of steel. Heavier than the rest of it. Okay, here it is. Okay, so let's try to find the right angle. This, I must say, this is a very clunky, this is a very clunky step. And mm -hmm. uh, it's, I mean, it's manageable. It's not, not like especially hard. If you weren't filming it, it'd probably be easy. I'm just concerned that that's not gonna be okay. The fact that that is allowed to come out of alignment now. I don't think it's gonna really matter actually once the servo's moving it, right? Shouldn't matter, right? As long as it pivots. Right, it just That's needs all to that pivot. matters and not come out. Right. Which now I'm sitting here questioning this side because it's allowed. See how the shaft doesn't protrude out the end? That tells mm -hmm. me that this is probably not where it needs to be. So I'm gonna try to slide it in just a little mm -hmm. bit more. Do mm -hmm. you see what I'm talking about? Yep. Yeah, but you can, if there was like a cutout here, you could get in, or if there was a straight hole somewhere, you could get in. But because of the angle, you can't. Okay, well, it is what it is, that's fine. If you had a super long handle or a shaft on your driver, that would help a ton in this application. Hmm. Okay, all right, so we're gonna pause and reset. All right, so we've got both of the stabilators installed. There is definitely a little bit of catching that can occur on both sides. I think the servo is gonna be strong enough to overwhelm any of that catching. But if I'm wrong, it could be a little bit devastating, so hopefully I'm not wrong. All right, so we have wings that have wires that have to pass through the fuse. There's a spar here, and then there's a way for the wire to pass through there. So I don't know if you guys can see, but if you can't see, then you can't see. It just goes in this vertical slot, which is incidentally the same slot that the other servo goes in. I don't know, or is that a retract rather? I think I'm probably gonna need to get a flat screwdriver or something. So I'm just gonna slide this in and I can glue that quick. Okay, so I'm actually thinking on this model, gosh, I don't know, I'm torn. Foam to foam is so much more like easy to use, but yet mucilage is here in my hand. So why don't we use that? I'm just kind of studying where the contact points are right now to think about where I can put the glue, okay? Because sometimes it's kind of hard to tell, especially when you have an unpainted wing. Okay, so mucilage compared to foam to foam. Okay. This is, this is a relatively new tube, and look how hard I'm squeezing, guys. Like, I'm squeezing, like, my hand. Look at this. If I had a vise, <clears throat> you see what I'm talking about, guys? Look at that. That's it's insane. It's not the way it should be. So, and it's not because the tip is sealed. Trust me, I know. So if you're using mucilage and it's giving you problems like that, there are ways to get around it. Uh, namely, hot water works really nice. You gotta have really hot water. You can either run hot water over the tube until it's warmed up, or you can stick it in hot water. You can also heat up hot water which let's just show you the best way. Grab one of your wife's favorite china glasses. Just like this. Put it in the microwave and heat it up. And then set your glue in it like this, okay? That will soften the glue to the point where it actually will come out. Don't put the glue in the microwave because it'll come out, I guarantee it. It's gonna come out all over your microwave. Fun. Yeah, so anyway, I don't know if that's enough warmth or not. Uh, the trouble with that is then you gotta you know, clean your tube off and it's like, what a mess. Now watch this. You guys saw how hard I was pushing just with that little bit of heat. No change yet. You really gotta heat it up. So let's go put this, let's show them the microwave. Oh, look at this, there's a microwave. We open the microwave, we put the microwave. Look how clean it is in there, wonderful. Plus one minute, plus two, plus three, three minutes. You want that so hot that you can pour it on lava and burn it. 
<laughs> you burn the lava with the hot water. Seriously. Or you could just use foam to foam. Are we going to use foam to foam? Now that we're, now that we're invested in this product. Well, so we're two we minutes and 37 we, seconds. We should show them if it works. Can we do something else while we're waiting for the glue? Yes, we can, I guess. Or the, the, wall the motor, water. the motor mount. What about this? We got okay. a motor mount thing. How does this motor mount? What does the instruction manual say? See, there's two set screws that came in there. And then why do they have two set screws in there? I don't understand that. And there's the plasticky thing. Yeah, and that's not plastic. Carbon. It's carbon fiber. What do the instructions say in English there? Install the motor to the motor base, which separated by the fiber plate as shown. That's what it says in English. Like this? Then install the propeller. Like this. Okay. Like this? Mm-hmm. Like that? Mm-hmm. Okay, and then like these? Like these? Mm, yes. Okay, and then what do these do? Are we supposed to glue that on? How the heck does that get held on? It's a pusher. Is it's it supposed to be glued? to the motor and put the whole eight motor to the square fiber rod. Okay, two and a half millimeters, right? Okay, so lay this down. Make sure that that center thing doesn't, doesn't spin and hit it, okay? See, that's going to spin, so it could get really hot and catch on fire. But you can, you can actually catch things on fire soon with the water that's going to come out of the microwave. Now, remember, once that water comes out, it's not like the, it's done. So I'm just going to get the first one started. I'm not going to get it all tight. Okay. Oh, that's empty. Where the heck are the rest of them? Jeez, our counter is terrible for this. Who picked this counter? I think it would have been you, Probably. obviously. No, it was me. Actually, you wanted white. It you wanted what we put in our bathrooms here. No, I wanted more of like the gray with like the purpley speck in it. Oh yeah, I didn't like that. Yeah. So you picked it. This is warmer. I like this counter. It is warm. I like this counter better before we chipped it 400 times. And our kid spilled blue food color on it. Yeah, that was, that was, Two weeks that was a bad moving. day. But it's okay, it was sealed. <laughs> It was sealed. It was sealed, I was going to say. Okay, so. Tight like a toy. Okay. Tightening it. Okay, note to self. If I'm designing and selling an airplane in the future, this step should be done. There's no reason that shouldn't have been in a bag like that. Okay. Ooh, look. Look Wait. at this delicious warm drink we've got. You might need hot pads for that. Yeah, it's, it's in the drawer in front of me. A little bit hot. So you mean here? Oh, we're gonna get this. Okay, garçon. I need my drink. I'm thirsty. Oh, shnikes. I almost spilled. Oh my goodness, that's really hot. You want a drink? No. Look, show the people. You already made me food today. Yes. I did, I made breakfast for us. Mm -hmm. And I asked my wife, I said, can I make breakfast for me or do I have to make you something? And no. then all the kids got up. You said, I, and I had to make, make breakfast. breakfast for them too. <laughs> for me and you, but nobody else. And then you made I was it like, for this everybody. is terrible. People expecting you to make food? I know. Like, what? That's, Jeez, how did I can't that? believe. Uh, okay, so now that's going to sit there and get hot. Okie dokie. Are we going back to the motor? Or nope, I'm just uh, going to put the ventral fins out because okay. I can. We're, going, we're getting through all the sacks though. That's I fair. don't know what those set screws are for, but I'm sure it's for something really important that we'll find out later. You know what they're for? They're for the landing gear. They okay. gotta be for the landing gear because we only had one extra black yep. set screw. Okay. <sighs> we're gonna let that keep warming up. Ooh, it's getting super juicy in there. I'm gonna actually squeeze the tube so it goes down into the water. See that? So like the vast majority is down there, okay? All right, so we got a wing hanging out here. We got a wing hanging out there. We're gonna have to do the vertical stabilizers. Looks like we want the decals out. Decals are super nice on this plane for being kind of a cartoonish look. They are very, very nicely applied. And I did adjust this a little bit further when we were paused there for a second. Let's see, there's not a vertical stabilizer support or anything, is there? Mm -mm. You know what? I don't even know if that's gonna fit without ramming it in. 
Gosh, that is in there like really good. And it's not straight, it's at an angle. Show the people from the front. So just be aware, it's at a bit of an angle and that's because of the fatty design on this plane. That's just one of the cool little details they added. They're canted out, but not by a large degree. Mm -hmm. just a Definitely bit. dry fit those things first. You don't wanna put that in. Wow, that's really hot. Probably shouldn't have touched that, but I did. Okay, landing gear are gonna be a lot harder to do once the wing is on. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so let's put that wing there, pop off the canopy, and let's extend the landing gear. This is where you need to make sure you aren't sitting on top of your nose gear, so I have to pull this back just a wee bit. And then camera crew, you might wanna be prepared, because this could be amazing. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, here's the landing gear. Oh, buddy, oh, buddy. If you've never used one of these, it's on the side, it says minus plus S. So just put your S with the white or the orange, in this case, mine is white. The Futaba color code. Did they go down? Did they go down? No. Okay, I'm just gonna unplug them now. All right, so the landing gear, oh, that looks sweet actually. <laughs> That's really cool. Let's look inside the housing. Does it look good? Oh yeah, it's super nice. They use a ball linkage there and then two servos for the gear door. You know, there's something to be said for having a servo for the left and a servo for the right. Is that a spring loaded? Squish that main gear in or that nose gear bogey. Squish down. Yes. Yeah. So cool. Okay, let's see if I, maybe I can put this upside down. This thing is so awkward to handle. I thought it was gonna be like way easy to handle, but it's actually way not easy to handle. Let's flip it upside down. Maybe that'll work better. Oh. You would plain stand. You would. It looks kind of gross on the bottom, but that's fine. I don't care. It works a lot better upside down. Better. Yeah. I shouldn't have slid it in. I should have put it upside down. It's gonna be tipsy though. Yeah, because the thing is out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then this one, I would argue that that should go like, like obviously it doesn't go that way. This would go that way, right? I don't know. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, now I'm gonna take these set screws out. Okay, there's two of them. I think these are also 1.5 millimeters. Of course, that needs to just be put back in. Okay, 1.5 millimeters, the assumption was correct. I'm just gonna see. Um, yeah, that's, it's gonna be fine, I think. Do I need to go deeper in there? It just doesn't feel like it'll go down anymore. Oh, it did go down all the way. Ooh, that's a tough spot, my index knuckle is running into the air in that. Ugh. Okay, got it. These little things I'm talking about are, they're minor, guys. I mean, it's just trying to give you guys real feedback about the experience. It's been a little bit challenging. There's a lot of like little details that come into play. Like for instance, this has to be centered, but there's no machined flat spot. There is a flat on the back. The flat is on the back, not the front. That's why I'm having trouble. So I need to run this on the back. There's a flat on the camera crew side. So it needs to go on the other side. It needs to go on, side. the set screw needs to go on the other side. These are interchangeable. On the picture on the box though, I think the little metal part is supposed to go out. What? The little metal. They want that out? That's what it looks like here and what? also on the picture on the box. Oh man, it is? That's weird, but this wheel is centered. Oh, you know why it has to? Because otherwise it'll hit here. Okay, fine. Oh. Fair enough, it is what it is. Oh, son of a biscuit lover, again. Okay, we're gonna do this. We're gonna get this right some year. So guys, if you wanna helping support our channel on Brian Phillips RC, best thing you can do is watch the videos, like them, subscribe, click the bell for notifications, and buy the planes that we have in the links below. So hopefully by then, by the time you're seeing this, we'll have links below for you to buy this thing. If not, then wait longer or buy something else that we have in our links below. We love bringing you guys the latest and greatest in RC, and we do our very best to work with lots of great affiliate companies that will bring you guys good quality products and be good to deal with and not screw you guys over and burn you and send you garbage or not send you stuff at all. 
and all those good things that people have experienced in the RC community over the years, especially when dealing with overseas uh, merchants that you don't know them from Sam and you'll never catch up to them and they could screw you over. And so that's why you deal with people stateside that have good distribution channels and they bring things in from overseas that are really nice or they bring in stuff that's made here in the States and then they distribute them. We work with people like that that are distributors as well as people that are manufacturers as well as big online companies. What is going on with all these wires? Ah. And sometimes you've got a big giant canopy and you're trying to put it on and the camera crew is just out of reach and she can't help. Upside down is definitely better, Here. but it's just awkward. Every angle of holding it has been difficult. All right, let's check the glue again. Oh yeah, it's getting nice and nice and runny inside of the tube. That's always nice, okay. Let's get this other landing gear on, bogey. And yes, these are all three spring loaded, which is totally cool. Where did the screwdriver go? It's still in the landing gear on this side. Oh my goodness. You know, sometimes we're doing these builds and I just think, it's not like a little, it's not, it's not like this plane has gone together badly, but it's just been like awkward. Yeah. The whole thing is awkward, but it's okay. Like you just sort of expect that on certain planes. Like I could have told you it was going to be awkward just from looking at the box. But there's, but then sometimes we're wrong. Sometimes we get out the, like the most complicated plane, like the L60, the L65 went together so easy. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I thought for sure that was gonna be like an all day project and it was gonna be tedious and I was gonna hate myself halfway through, but no, it was like way easy. Okay, so there is a flat on this side. That's why I've chose to put it on here. Now, why do I care about the flat camera crew? That's where it's gonna bite, right? That's where it's gonna align the landing gear straight mm. with, with the road or with the runway or whatever. And you see how it's still got a little bit of play on it? Mm -hmm. Ooh. I uh, hope that's not gonna be a problem when we're landing. If your mains are allowed to play like that, it's not such a big deal as long as all of them have a little bit of play. But you don't want your plane to be going down the runway like this. <laughs> I mean, that'd be kind of convenient if you could control it as such, which they do on B-52 bombers. So that's really cool. But they also have four landing gear, well, four main bogies that come down with multiple landing gear on each. So you can actually, take a crosswind landing and they don't have to crab and then straighten up at the last second because their wingspan's so long, they can crab all the way onto the ground. Pretty cool, huh? That was my design. <laughs> all right, so I'm actually gonna do this from upside down too. This seems like a better, yeah, just slip on down, make yourself comfortable, plane. Okay, so you see that? That wire needs to go through that hole. And then we gotta glue this on there. This is better for visibility. It is. A lot better. Yes. I'm liking this. Now, this should be warm enough to actually work. So I'm just gonna grab a paper towel so I don't have to use the actual towel. And the only reason I wanna dry it off is so it'll drip all over my electronics and stuff. Okay, so now watch this. This is, you guys aren't gonna believe this. Feel how hot that is. I'm like, actually, Jeez. yeah, it's oh, like it's hot. hot. So now this should come out just like bud. Like butter. Whew, that's really hot, like it's burning my hand. Okay. Okay, so once you get that warm, oh, that son of a gun still doesn't want to come out. That's crazy. I know, isn't that nuts? Like you would think it would just like have no choice but to come out yeah. nicely. Um, but evidently it has that choice, in fact. Okay. I just keep having visions of it like popping all I know. over. That's kind of what I'm worried about. Well, it's happened before. That's why I'm worried about it. It's not gonna pop. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, here we go. All right guys, now you can see why I use foam to foam it anymore. Cause I used to use this almost exclusively and I had nothing but trouble at the end. And I bought like what, like eight tubes of this or six tubes of this. Yeah, I mean, it's like really bunch. cheap. Yes. But then you always have shipping built in, which, you know, then it kind of like defers some of the costs that you saved. Okay, see it's coming out now. There it is, good. Ooh, yeah. Big old clump of it, man. I'm still having to squeeze really hard, just so you guys know. Thing that's really nice about mucilage, and I gotta give, a, give them credit for this, is that it is sticky right out of the tube, 
and you pretty much don't hardly have to let it set up. I've had it before where it's like, I opened this kind of a long time. See, look, I opened it in January. It's not like it's been open it's that like, long. Right. Does it glue all the way back? Uh, no, it stops there. So I think I need to glue here. They suggested gluing a little bit on the carbon fiber rod too, didn't they? Okay. But you guys can see how I've done it. Just kind of trap a little bit up at the front and then just work it. Okay. That stuff is super tacky, super tacky, just like Brian Phillips. <laughs> Okay, so we're just gonna slide this into the shaft. Oh yeah, nice. Oh, I gotta slide this down that channel. Yep, I gotta slide this down that channel. Gosh, this plane just slips everywhere, it's ridiculous. I can't get to hold still to save my life. It's kind of comical, I'm sure, to watch. Okay. Oh crap, I gotta go in through two slots. That's gonna suck. <laughs> I have to go into the air intake, come around the other side Ooh. now. Look, so yeah, you're definitely gonna, you're gonna need some forceps for this project. Otherwise you're never gonna be able to reach your wires in. Oh, and then you have to go through into the middle? Yep, mm. yep, exactly, you, that's right. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this through carefully. Oh, son of a biscuit lover. I gotta twist the wire again. Mm -hmm. like this very carefully just giving it a twist a little hesitation in the right direction and then I'm gonna hold this vertically okay. oh good lordy lord lord this is this is um kind of a pain oh look it's all open right there that's a huge cheater oh yeah that's weird I didn't okay. expect that I didn't realize it was there at first okay so yeah, so this is like one of those things where if, if you built like 400 of them, then you'd pick up on all the tricks, but like, let's get real. We don't build 400. They might in China because they're getting ready to ship them to customers. But in our case, we build one, mm -hmm. we use it, and then you, you don't generally build a second one. I must say it's pretty cool looking. <laughs> it's like comical, but also cool. I mean, it's like, whoa, it's like all the things you want from an airplane, but it's just short. Okay, I'm still, I don't know. I'm really liking it. It's a cool plane. I'm, I, it looks surprisingly like cooler than I thought it was gonna look. I thought it was gonna be more cartoon and less cool. And it's like yeah. pretty cool actually. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay, all right, let's keep going. I warmed up my, uh, my sticky stuff for you, honey. Oh. Mm-hmm. I think I'll just let you handle that. Handle that all by myself. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, here it comes. All right, so same same drill, except I just kind of got a little bit more started. I have blown these tubes up before, and it is a mess. I have it on video. What did, what plane did I do that on? Was that the? Oh, you did it on camera? Yeah. Oh yeah. I blew the bottom of the seal out. That's back when I didn't film everything for you. That was one of your Great. favorite times of life, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, son of a biscuit. Oh, grab it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh I got stuff everywhere. <laughs> Jeez. It's, I don't want to get it on me. It's so sticky. Okay. Well, I'm going to lay that back down. Maybe. Will you pull that paper towel? The glue pull the paper towel. Thank you. Okay, I can put that back where it was. There's stickiness on it still. Thank you. All right, so now I have to, and this is one thing that's nice about mucilage. See that? You can literally just curl it off like a booger. Yep, like a booger. If you did a lot of booger picking, you'd be more experienced with that. Okay. Ooh, the sidewall of that nacelle is not very thick, so be careful. All right. So I wish that was the yellow side up. It'd be a lot less visible. Okay, so you just kind of have to slide that down in there. I'm trying to do this in such a way that it just looks really nice. And um, it's not been super, super easy 
to get everything to line up, but it's actually not like been a really hard build. No. Just awkward steps like this that are weird and unusual. So I would say, I don't know. The Pulsar is just a strange choice. I wonder, see, I don't know. Is this an X-Fly product? It's not an X-Fly product, mm -mm. is it? I don't think so. I just wonder if they bought those from X-Fly to be part of their package deal because they're like, well, it flies badly without a stabilizer. I wonder if that's what it is. Which would totally make sense. It's kind of a weird size. Mm -hmm. Weird shape, weird CG, all that stuff. Anytime you have a plane that flies kind of weird, a stabilizer generally helps make it better. Doesn't necessarily resolve everything about it, but it definitely helps make it better. And also, some people would say that a stabilizer is for like wimps or, you know, babies or anything like that. And that's fine if you feel that way, but I'm going to keep using them. So if I'm a wimp, baby, whatever, then so be it. I do like stabilizers myself a lot. That is not a very long reach. Holy cow. How in the heck am I going to get that on the inside? You've got a big bump. Oh, I do have a yep. little bit more loop, don't I? Yep. In the nacelle. Mm -hmm. I'm glad one of us could see. Come on, come on. Oh yeah, there it is. Yes. There you go. In the hole. I stuck it in the hole. Okay. Well, that was awkward. Oh my goodness. They can't all be easy, right? That is. It's pretty cool. It's weird. <laughs> See how many times we drop something today. <laughs> All right, so we've got the whole thing assembled now. I guess technically we could just lay it down because like this plane stand is, I don't know if that helped sure. or hurt, but we got to get this done, but we can't really do that until we have the radio installed in my opinion. Um, I mean, you can physically do it, but I don't think it'd be the right time to do it. I want to push these wings in a couple of times just make sure we have good purchase here. Now they are suggesting a two-part epoxy. I'm suggesting mucilage. Do whatever makes your, your heart content. Okay, people? We don't care what you use as long as you glue it. If you try to not glue it, you're probably going to have bad results. All right, so let's talk about this motor. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, okay. I just don't understand. Is there like not a screw? I don't know. I guess I'm going to glue it. Wait, wait, wait. Really? What do you mean, wait, wait, wait? Like, what do you suggest? Is there a set screw? I don't see a set screw. It just slides on there. I mean, it's a pusher prop, for God's sake. You're not doing thrust reverse. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what, what else you would need to do. They glued the shaft into the bottom of the plane. You just glue this onto there. Okay. Where does the ESC go? Does it go on the inside and then the wires come out? Yeah, it looks like they'll reach. See, they should reach. Okay, and yes, these colors are not necessarily going to match up, okay? I don't know if I can plug these in first, but we're gonna try it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's kind of scary when it bends twice like that. Oh, come on, there it is, got it. There's not a yellow, so I'm just gonna go blue to yellow. Now with a brushless mode, if you guys aren't already aware, and I'm assuming you are, just switch any two if it goes the wrong way and it will fix the direction of travel. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna try to kind of stuff that in there. Oh no, is it gonna make the angle? Yes, get in there. You know you want it. Nothing's ever as easy as you want it to be. There it is. Okay, let's get that in the hole. All right, so is that nose reinforced? No, it's not. No. So in order to do this next step, I'm just kind of wondering if it would make better sense if I, like that just seems like such an afterthought. Am I missing something here? I need the plane stand back. Oh, you gotta be freaking kidding me. Mm, it's 
starting to get annoying. All right, so the fatty's upside down. All right, so how are you supposed to manage these cables? There's no way to put a tie on there. That can't be the right way. Like there should where, be somewhere to tie it. Where else would they come out of though? Well, you're not gonna put them on the top. Right? No. I mean, you can't go through the hole because that only goes this far. I don't know, we're gluing it. That's the way it is. I don't know that you would absolutely totally have to glue it, but I'm gonna glue it. Okay. It's gonna be easier if we glue it from the inside a little bit. And I mean, I'm not gonna do a lot. I'm just gonna do just a little glob of it on each of the sides, okay? So if you can show them that at all, that'd be good, see? Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. I mean, it's not gonna be like the end all cure all there. If you crash, that's the only condition I can think that would, I'm kind of grabbing up here by the nose gear, by the way. Yeah, I mean, that's gonna hold it fine. If we need to unglue it, you can use, when you use mucilage, or a foam to foam type product. I actually haven't tried it with foam to foam. With mucilage, you can use kicker and it will break down that adhesive. I just wish there was a place to throw a zip tie at least or something. Cause like that just seems like an afterthought to me. Unless you're supposed to go around here, put it through one of the nacelles. I don't know if that would possible. reach. Yeah, I don't think it would reach either. See how this is hitting over here, but it's not over here. See how that one goes vertical and this one doesn't. I wonder if that's gonna be a problem. I don't know if it's gonna be, a, I don't think it's gonna be a problem. I wanna pay attention to that later. Okay. Okay, so then this, I think at minimum, when we're all said and done, that needs to probably be at least taped down just so it doesn't look sloppy, sloppier than it already does. Okay, don't you think? Mm -hmm. I do. Um, there really needs to be something in there. That's just like, like a groove, a channel. Do you suppose we cut a channel and put it in? Or just tape it down? Or what do you think? For sure tape. And then maybe I mean, we could zip tie to this. And that would look really nice and clean. But it's still kind of like, yeah, I don't know if I want to tape it necessarily. Because if I were to dig out either side and then send a zip tie under, we could tie this down right there. That'd probably be enough. Then you have to dig it out. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll come back to that. So this is, oh, that's a reverse threaded. Um, the prop has adapters. Oop, almost forgot. I have to put my mucilage back in the hot water so it can be cooking. So you have to use the pusher prop goes this way. So it's kind of like backward, if you will. Because then when this spins, it's gonna spin that way. Oh wait, I wanna see real quick. I have to still put a collar on, but it's gonna definitely go that way, which means when the motor goes this way, it's gonna tighten itself, okay. So yeah, I mean, we still have to obviously tighten it on. Is there a washer that came with it at all? I don't think so. No. Okay, all right, so that doesn't fit, that doesn't fit, that doesn't fit, that doesn't fit, that does, maybe fit that for sure goes over but it's slop it's sloppy okay so that goes and all you have to do is just hold on to it and break the tabs off of it and that goes in there like that just like that some of them have a front and a back this one doesn't have both okay this is gonna be weird because I have to screw backward. It's always awkward trying to put on a reverse nut. That's so strange. This is so light. Put your hand out, I wanna show you. Oh, There's wow. It's like nothing to it. It's really light. Okay. See, I'm having to go backward with, uh, is that backward anyway? Because this is reverse threaded. So we're just tightening this all the way on. Okay, so we need to get a crescent to tighten that. Crescent, of course, is gonna 
give you the ability to really torque it on there. I think that nut is sort of fighting us. Mm. Like the, or it's not the nut so much, but the uh, plastic spacer. This does not look kosher. Oh, it's just so weird with the reverse threading. I always get freaked out by that. Okay, so that's correct, tight. All right, so we have the prop. By the way, just let's take this minute to talk about how close the prop clearance is to the ground. That is very close. Oh, wow. Okay. So you're gonna wanna be careful about that, guys. All right, so, and also, I wanna talk about that for a second, too. When you come in to fly this jet, and you flare for landing, guess what's gonna happen? You're not gonna be flaring for landing. Not without hitting your prop, because look how close this is. <laughs> uh, that is pretty tight on clearance. I would say that needs to be a lot shorter or cut off. I don't know. I don't see, I don't, I don't see that being a very good problem to have because mm. You know, generally when you land a, an aircraft, especially a jet like this, you're using the body to help slow you down, but maybe not this one. So you're gonna have to do a three wheel landing like pretty much greasy perfect every time. That's my take on it. What do you think? Looks that way. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we're just gonna get some of this mucilage into both of these surfaces. Now I gotta say, like as much as I have not enjoyed having to squeeze out this glue, it definitely like does a pretty good job of holding stuff together. Mm -hmm. Oh man, it's just like so much work. And once you get it started, it does tend to be just a little bit easier. But I mean, look at how hard I'm squeezing that still, guys. It's not like I'm a weakling. I type of guy that has to back off or I'll hurt your hand when I shake it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, there you go. All right, so now that is not necessarily good to leave on the tip because it'll definitely interfere with your next time. And the crazy thing about mucilage is that when you're using it, you got to remember to squeeze the air out of it before you cap it off. So you loosen the cap, squeeze the air out of it, and then put it away. Now, I don't think there's any other stuff we have to glue once we get these in, right? I don't believe Oh, so. ventral fins. Oh, ventral shoot. fins. No, not shoot. I still have them. I am going to spread this glue a little bit on the vertical stabilizers. Just because they're kind of, I don't know. If you lose one, it's not going to go well for you. And I got a lot of glue in there, which is good. That's what I wanted. See how sticky it is? It's like I can barely move it around. Guys, that is, that is so sticky. <laughs> like I could almost pick up the plane by the Q-tip. That's, that, but that's what you want. You want it to be tacky like that. And you don't want to have to wait for it to cook off. That's the advantage that you get with mucilage over foam to foam and also the disadvantage because then you have a hard time getting out of the tube when it's been sitting for a few months. And by the way, that was the way it was when it was new. That's part of the reason why I complained about it. Because if it was like that after sitting for six or eight months, I would have been more forgiving of it. Remember, I dry fit these. So, oh man, that sounded crispy. Did you hear that noise? What, just well, you're the smiling. Gear? That's like gonna break in half. Oh. Look, watch, when I push this in, listen. It's like bending the plane. So you're gonna have to really be careful when you press those in, folks. The nacelle is the strong part, so put your hand under the nacelle and push. Yeah, that worked. Okay, yeah, that worked. Don't do it with the landing gear, because that thing was like bending in half, mm. so it must be thin here. Okay, okay, good. All right, sweet. So we have the basic build done. Now we just gotta do the ventral fins, probably would have been smarter to start with because they're smaller. Um, but then look at that, look at that. That is so like not okay, having that stuff flopping around like that. Yeah. Hmm. 
maybe that prop will give us something to hang on to in the motor. Ooh, that does kind of help a little bit. Okay, ventral fins. Where do those go? They're ventral fins, they go right here. Oh, where's the spot? There's two and there's, there's markings on both sides. Um, so they're kind of pseudo ambidextrous. That will help stop it from tipping. When you're coming in to land, they're gonna get scraped up bad though. Okay, guys, let's just show you the difference real quick. You've seen the mucilage and we're not trying to, you know, talk you into one product versus the other, but it's like, we, we don't really care which glue you like. We're just gonna show you the differences and you can make up your own mind, okay? That, um, that was a highly less frustrating process, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it was. Like a hundred times less. Now, because I can and I'm lazy, I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna spread that, and then I'm gonna spread that, and I'm gonna spread that, okay? Then I'm gonna take the tip and just spread it around a little bit and then put it in the hole. Got a little bit out the, the back there, which I didn't mean to do. I'll do the same thing here, except this time I'm gonna take that little bit of glue and just kind of chase it behind. Okay, holding the nacelle, just squishing it in. Looks pretty good pretty though. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now we need to get the elevators to be in a, an appropriate configuration. I'm just trying to decide if it'd be better to do it with the stabilizer or not. And then we got it. We got to do something about that. I mean, that's like just really bad. I don't like the way that that looks at all. I really want to make it look better, but then what if it spins the wrong way? That's why I'm thinking, at least until we know that it's right. Because if I tape this down, I could put a piece of tape on there and then I could put a piece of tape above. And then you'd be able to untape it if you need to. I could untape to. it. Why don't we just do that? Because like, honestly, I don't know that there's like a whole lot better way to do it. So let's show you guys at home what we're gonna do here. We're just gonna take a piece of tape. We're gonna cut it. I'm gonna apply the tape right where we think we wanna secure this. So I'm like literally just going like an equidistant point. Um, this, is, this is just a little trick you can use so you don't have to peel up your paint. And in this case, um, now I just literally take a slightly shorter, you know, like maybe an eighth of an inch shorter piece of tape. And I'm gonna lay this flat so it looks super neat. Oh man, that's getting the static electricity from the nacelles is pulling that tape up on the tip of my tom thumb. Okay. okay, there you go, just like that. And then just like that. So then at least that holds that down. And it's not like it's a completely permanent thing. You could actually unredo it or undo it or whatever. I'm just going to fold that and pull that motor lead nice and tight. Tight like a tiger. Be kind of nice to zip tie that there so it holds it. Because I could see this getting yanked off and then ripping the leads off the motor. I don't like that at all. I just really don't like that. That needs to have a better inlet. It'd be really nice if there was a channel that would allow for all three of those wires to sit inside. Mm -hmm. um, but then you may have to provide some sort of a plastic to hold it in place, you know? And I think that's why they deferred to just like nothing. And then these wires have me nervous too. Like I'm gonna constantly be fighting those. Um, and actually in that regard, you can glue those in place. I don't think it's gonna be such a big issue once we get everything in place on the receiver and everything's plugged in. So let's go ahead and flip this back over. It does look pretty sweet, actually. <sighs> so quickly we forget the frustrations. <laughs> let's pop that off. That ESC might actually supposed to sit down there, I wonder. And if that's the case, then that's all hunky-dory too. I just like the cable management is going to be atrocious on this. Hmm. I'm thinking for a minute about my radio. Uh, yeah, let's pause. Okay. So we forgot, we got to glue the missile rails on. The missile rails have a very small contact point and it's going to be very close to hitting the landing gear. So I'm actually not hundred percent sure I'm like into installing this 
because look how close that is. I mean, it's going to pass by like within an eighth of an inch of that thing. I'm sure it's probably fine, but it's still one of those things where it's like, I'm not sure it's worth the risk. Cause I feel like when you're, your plane is up in the air. That's when things get knocked out of perfect alignment a little bit because they wiggle and move. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, your landing gear won't come down. So not that this is exactly a high precision build, right? So I'm actually gonna glue that a little bit heavy. Um, and I normally don't glue both surfaces. You're kind of supposed to generally do that but I'm gonna go ahead and glue both surfaces and um, on both of these because I think that's gonna give us a slightly better, uh, better chance at success. You're not gonna be able to see this one, it's good, it's fine. It's the same exact thing, guys. So that should be technically the last. Now, if you really want that stuff to set up nicely, um, let it dry and you can stick that down and it will pick up the whole plane. No exaggeration. So, but I want to set it in and make sure I can get it aligned. So I'm actually going to set this in there onto the other surface that's glued. I'm just going to hope I get the alignment exactly right. And then double, triple check because that landing gear is going to pass like this at an angle. So I think we're going to be okay. Oh yeah, I think we'll be fine. Okay. All right, slide it forward just a little bit. All right, so I think we're okay. I think we're okay. It de definitely looks cool. Um, ordinance is always a big question mark for me, but generally ordinance is not glued on. If it's glued on, you're married to it. So I hope I like the ordinance. All right, elevators. Uh, there's an elevator. Elevator. The elevators are plugged into the Pulsar. I was going to just do this with, I was just going to do this with the XPC battery checker, but I'm not sure that I want to bother with it because we got to get the servo centered so that we can actually land all our servo set up. Mm. Okay. So I was planning on using the AR620, but as with the last plane, they haven't showed up yet. We're kind of waiting on them. A 620 is gonna give us the basic setup. So we're just gonna use this one that's been in my bag of tricks for a while. It's an AR610, it's the predecessor to the 620. Uh, pretty much does all the same stuff for all intents and purposes. Shouldn't really detract from what we're doing. It's gonna be exactly the same setup. So what I wanna do is I wanna jump into radio setup here in a minute just so we know everything sets up uh, and plugs in. But I am also concerned a little bit about this ESC and making sure that we can reach everything because there is quite the tangle of wires going on here. And this is the aileron from one side and that's the aileron from the other side. And so they're just very, very tight. As in, there's not much room. Did we get Y cables with this plane? No. Okay, is there a Y cable already installed? Question two. Yes, there is. And that, that is likely our aileron output. Yes, that is the ailerons. Yep, aileron out, okay. So we can at least reach back and we're gonna use forceps to grab. Oh, by the way, if you poke the tip of your mucilage with your screwdriver and you forget to pull it off, it's gonna gum up on you. Uh, but you can actually just clean it right off, which is nice because it'll booger off of there, which is really nice. And just use the booger to get the rest of the schmutz off of there, which works really nice. And like I said, if you don't get it off or you can't get it off with your fingers because it's dried too much, Take some Instaset or accelerator, spray it on a rag, and then you can wipe it off. It'll actually break down the adhesive and you can get it off that way. It works really nice if you get it on your hands and it dries uh, because generally that doesn't happen. But when it does, it's kind of nasty. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the Y cables and the ailerons and we're just gonna plug those in. Kind of one at a time, the cable management's gonna suck in this plane bad. And there is definitely kind of a unique color code going on here. It's yellow, black, more yellow. So we're gonna go brown to black and then just throw caution to win on the rest. I'm assuming that'll be correct. I don't know how else it could go. 
And much like many other jets that we've used in the past, this one wants to tip up on its hind end uh, without a battery installed. And that's pretty typical because the way the CG works out now that that's started, I should be able to just use my fingers. Nope, can't. Really frustrating. This is the type of plane that it goes together reasonably easy, but there's just a lot of little frustrating steps. And that's typical whenever you get into these like weird one-off planes in my experience. Okay, so I'm gonna grab this, get in there, hold it from behind tight, and then try to force it in, but it's not all the way in, so you gotta make sure you get it all the way in, guys. You just don't quite have enough length to really purchase. There it goes, now it's in. Okay, now I can just get that out of the way and never think about it again in the rest of my life until the day I die. Okay, well, we're not gonna have a lot of wasted weight on wire, that's for sure, because this is all like the exact length that's possible. Okay, I'm holding this down. The black is gonna go toward the front of the aircraft and the brown is gonna go toward the front of the aircraft. Okay, get in there. Okay, good. You see, I'm just holding my middle finger. There we go, so it's clipped. I can lift that up and slide it over to the side so it's sort of out of the way. And of course we have where the battery lead is gonna to need to be plugged in. This I stuck down where I stuck it down and now I'm not gonna have enough room to stick the ESC where I want to, but I am gonna go ahead and use that for the ESC. There's not anything really specifically magical about this spot, but I'm gonna go ahead and just err on the side of, that's where it was, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that for the ESC. I have to assume that that's what they meant for this and not necessarily for the receiver because this is a plug and fly. So if it's a plug and fly, they usually don't do any accommodations for a receiver because they don't know what type or style, style of receiver that you're gonna be using. Okay. Just stick this down into the double-sided tape. I would have liked to have that carried forward just a little bit. Ooh, that, that was not so good. There it is. So it's stuck in there. I'm gonna actually reach under the plane and hold the bottom of the phone. Okay, now it's stuck in. All right, folks, so the next step, of course, is gonna be to start landing uh, wires into the receiver, and this is the landing gear. So gear, of course, doesn't go into the pulsar because it's not a stabilized channel uh, as far as it pertains to the uh, landing gear retracts, but the steerable nose gear, of course, will be. So when we plug into a receiver like this, we have a number of different channels. They're gonna need to plug into these little split cables. Then this little split cable goes back into the um, pulsar, but there's also an SBUS output if you want to do that. So on this drawing, they show the splitter cable. So this is in black and white and this needs to be in color. I would really like to see this in color. Okay, so it's a multi-in. Oops, sorry, wrong one. So this one's aileron, then rudder, then mode. Aileron, then rudder, then mode. Okay, so on our transmitter, oh, you know what we're gonna need? We're gonna grab the transmitter and we'll come right back. All right, so we have the radio. I'm gonna hit back and cancel and I'm gonna scroll down to new model. We're gonna create an acro. You can click that and scroll. It takes a few seconds for it to actually do it. Now, the reason we're doing the radio setup like this is because we need to know what channels are assigned uh, to what port when we bind to this AR610, which for you guys is gonna be an AR620. We just happen to be out of stock on that so far. Okay, so. I'm just gonna go out to the standard acro. We're not even gonna do any of the naming and stuff. We'll come back to that in a minute. So now you can see, if you just scroll over one, you go to monitor mode and you can see where the channels are. Now, because if you've got a system set up, disconnect RF, you can go down to the aircraft type and you can change what type of wing you have. So like if you're doing anything other than a normal wing type, this is where you would do it. And then I can change the image to some other um, more appropriate image. 
that you see fit. I don't know, that's probably as close as it's gonna get. And you can set up flight modes and all that stuff. I don't know if I need a flight mode or not. There are retracts on this plane, so I'm just thinking out loud. Retracts, flaps, there's not gonna be flaps. But generally we preserve that for flaps. And then this is where we would put our auto leveling. So you don't have to actually set up a flight mode for that, so I'm just not going to. But then in hindsight, I think I should probably name the model, which is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go into the model name, and then we're gonna scroll in whatever the name is, which is the Fatty F14 Tomcat. So we'll do that and come right back. All right, so we have Fatty F14 Tomcat. Okay, and then we already have all the rest of the stuff set up in that menu, so we can scroll in and do um, throttle cut. Of course, we wanna definitely have throttle cut on us as a prop plane. Okay, so we're just looking down here. We'll make sure that works, and then we'll make sure that we can shut it off. Yep, and that works. Okay, so throttle cut is on. Then I wanna go to dual rates and expo. I'm gonna set it all to switch F, not the throttle stick. And then I'm gonna go, they were suggesting to use Expo on the first or second flight, so I don't know. I'm just gonna set it to my normal setup and then we can defer from that where we need to go because that's we have a system that works. We start in this, we have less or more Expo and less rates in that setting. So we have the median setting, we have more if we need more or we have less if we have too much. And then we just basically copy that to all three of the control channels. But just bear in mind that this is only basically a bank and yank plane, which means you have uh, elevator and rudder, excuse me, elevator and ailerons. So you can bank the plane and you can yank the plane. So you bank and then yank to make a turn. So that's what they mean by bank and yank. But on the ground, you still have a steerable nose gear. I just fear that there might need to be some additional settings on here and I'm not sure what to expect. So we'll just do what we're doing. Throttle cut's already set. And timer, did they happen to mention anything about timing? Not sure. Let's check. Um, I don't see anything about 30 C or above recommended. They did recommend a 30 C or bigger. Okay, they're saying 10 millimeters up and down if you do measurements on your aileron stroke. They don't say anything about the elevator or anything else. So I guess whatever that is, it is. That's actually the abnormal part, so you'd think they would have mentioned that. Okay, that being said, uh, we have our timer. Let's go ahead and set it to five, uh, five minutes. Yeah, five minutes should be plenty good. Active, anything over, so that's a one out or one time. Uh, once the throttle goes over this threshold, it'll start counting down. Clear, clears it. I want a voice at one minute, nothing at 20, and then voice countdown with a tone and vibration expiration. Tone minute there after. Throttle cuts on, everything's ready to rock and roll. We do have landing gear, but it's already set or it should be. It might be in the wrong position. We'll figure it out really quick. So now the whole reason we did all that was so we could go like this and then see where it's lined up. Uh, you have to have your wing type set up before or the aircraft type before you can do this. Okay, so now we have three wires that need to be landed to go to the multi output to go into the pulsar. So the multi in is going to be ailerons. It's gonna be a light color. So we don't really care about this Futaba crap. It doesn't matter to us because we're not using Futaba, okay? So this is for ailerons. Okay, so ailerons in our case are gonna be, you can see on this signal is on the left side and negative is on the right. Okay, so signal, signal, and signal is what we're looking for. So this is going to channel one, excuse me, not channel one, it'll go to channel two. So aileron just happens to be marked on the the markings here, but this, remember, this goes all the way to the left. It's only signal, okay? And then the next one down is rudder. So we'll have rudder here. So we'll skip one and go to rudder. 
and uh, looks like there's actually there is one skipping on our screen up here too. So it's channel four. And then this last one, which is the darkest one, is the three position switch. So it's not gonna be gear, it's gonna be auxiliary one. And we want that again to be hooked up to the signal line. Even though the colors are the colors, you want the signal to be going out here to go in the multi end. Now that means that at some point, another channel is going to be carrying ground so you have a reference to go against for the signal, okay? And power too. So now they also need to have uh, S bus mode. Okay, elevator is carried over from the entire cable. Okay, so elevator. So elevator comes out of here and goes to the elevator. Okay, so brown goes to this side because it's negative, then plus is in the center, as you can see from the little silk screen marker. It's actually a sticker in this case and then signal goes up or to the left. Oh man, that was kind of hard to get in there. Okay, so then we have to use a bind plug because this is older technology. Of course, the new ones just have a bind button on the 610. It's got kind of like a rounded case. You can click on it. Okay, so then we also have the gear plug, which is gonna go in there, but at least now we can identify where everything goes. Throttle, of course, is gonna go here, which is gonna provide BEC voltage for this, which is then gonna get passed through to the Pulsar. And then the signal for these three are gonna go out to the Pulsar through the multi-in. And then of course we have one plug for the gear that's gonna plug back in. So let's do that now. I'll carry the X-Fly Pulsar controller over with me. Okay, so this is the retracts or the gear, not the steerable, but the gear. So just try to slip that in there. All right, so there's the gear and then the multi-in. I don't exactly know where that is. It says rudder out, elevator out. Okay, so rudder out. Why is there no rudder hooked up? That says wheel out. Oh, because there's wheel and rudder. So rudder and wheel are separate on a Pulsar. So if you kind of look, I'm gonna actually just grab this and use the screwdriver so I can point. This is the wheel out that goes to the steerable nose gear and then rudder out is separate. Then elevator out, ailerons out, S bus in, we don't worry about because we're not using that multi in we care about. Elevator in, we do care about, okay? So this is the elevator, right? Yep, elevator. And signal goes up according to the rest of the plugs. Ugh, this cable management is gonna be terrible. It's not actually all that hard to do any of this. It just seems like this is just one of those planes where nothing is lining up the way I want it to. This might be a fluke. Maybe it's something you guys are gonna deal with too when you do yours. Okay, I'm gonna grab that at an angle so I can reach in there and really slip that in. And then sometimes they don't like to go, so you have to get a little bit creative because it's pretty hard to get your hand down there. Like, impossible. I can get my thumb down there, maybe. Jeez. Okay. So then multi-in. This is kind of driving me nuts because it keeps walking away from me. I'm going to put that in there because it's that way it doesn't lift on me every time. I look away for one second. So this is multi-in. Of course, it's shorter than the provided cable. So you gotta kind of be thoughtful about the way you route that because now that's gonna make everything really hard to reach. Okay, so signal goes up. I can actually grab that pretty hard then. And that's multi-in, there we go. Okay, that's in. And then of course we've got gear and throttle where is this okay so here's throttles so that's the esc needs to go straight into this jeez this is gonna be a mess look at this um okay throttle is gonna go here <laughs> goodness gracious look at look at this it's like it's trapped already um might need some servo extensions if you're building those now, where is my gear plug? Because gear, as in retracts, I already plugged in, didn't I? Yep, it's already plugged in. Okay, so it's actually plugged in now. 
Look at that beautiful cable management. It's, it's like way worse than any plane we've done in recent history. I can definitely say that beyond a shadow of a doubt. This is not an overly complex plane. Makes me really happy about what we did with the L64, L65 rather. Um, Cause I thought that thing was clean when we were done. Mm -hmm. I was. Okay. Um, I have batteries set up. So why don't I use one of the appropriate 4S batteries that's charged? The wind is actually calm right this second, but I don't expect it to really stay that way. I don't know why it's calm. It hasn't been calm all day. 2700 4S. Let's just see where this sits. Okay. I'm gonna hold my hand here and just push this wing back in, make sure we got good purchase, which we do. Okay. So then shelf liner would normally be used here, but if you'll note with me, there is no strap in this plane. None. It's just Velcro. So you're pretty much gonna have to use Velcro. Okay, so if you have to use Velcro, then what you do is you take one of your batteries with Velcro and you use that. So I'm gonna get this one ready by charging it as well. And then in the meantime, this 3200, so they recommended 27, 2600 to 3200 or 3300. Mm -hmm. Hmm, okay. I'm just gonna actually put this Velcro on. I know normally we would use shelf liner and the shelf liner would prevent the battery from slipping, but we have to have some way to retain it to the shelf liner, okay? Even if it's just a little bit. So this one's getting a piece of Velcro. Yes, you're right. I hate putting Velcro on my batteries, but I'm gonna do it for this plane. Even hard heads can make exceptions once in a while. Okay, I also need to get a bind plug because I need to actually bind this plane, something we don't normally have to do with a bind plug. We normally have a bind button on most of our modern planes. Um, and I don't know what I'm gonna do with that receiver yet. I haven't decided yet. Yes, that's right, I have bags of bind, bind <laughs> plug. They work really nice if you ever need to um, build a custom cable, but you don't have the cable builder. Cause you can actually cut these and you can pull those pins out with an X-Acto knife and then you can put them in there and then just crimp to extension wires or solder. So if you don't have an end builder, you can use those to cheat and do that. If you guys ever knew that. All right, so this is a bind plug. This is just like a monstrosity of wiring mess. I don't like the way the wiring worked on this plane very well. It's just like everywhere. Um, if I put the battery in now, that would be the better option. Oh, you know why that Velcro's there too? That's covering up access to the nose gear. Because underneath, that's where the wire goes. Okay, so I have that in the right spot. I don't know if it's centered. I don't know if the CG's right. We're just gonna not worry about that just quite yet. We're gonna get wires plugged in. Okay, now camera crew, I want you to grab that manual and put this back where it came from. And then I'm just gonna have to have this stuff in a spot where I can be safe, okay? Because if that thing takes off, I wanna make sure mm -hmm. that we're not gonna have an issue, okay. okay? So actually we're gonna pause and clean up all the tools. Okay, so we're gonna bind now. We had to stop and clean stuff up a little bit. Bind is here, or you can turn this off while pressing this, turn it back on, that'll also go into bind. Disconnect RF, disconnected, okay, bind. So now I'm gonna plug this in. It times out super fast. I don't like that. I don't really understand why it binds so short. It says binding. Okay, so the ESC armed. Okay, we have movement. Elevators are not hooked up. Throttle's not working good, okay? Throttle's backward, throttle cuts on, okay? We're gonna have to reverse that. So there's two ways to do that. We can either switch any two wires or we can reprogram the ESC. So in our case, it makes way better sense just to unplug and swap any two of the wires. Now that's true for any ESC, generally speaking. It's not necessarily the easiest always 
but it's definitely for us in this case, okay? So the plane is bound. Yes, you can leave it messy in there. It's not gonna necessarily hurt anything. Um, also, I was thinking about this uh, when we were paused and cleaning up and I was thinking, you know, if we wanted to and you didn't wanna put Velcro on your battery, you could take that Velcro and make a loop out of it. We've done that in the past and you literally take a knife and scrape off some of the, um, the material or you stick it to itself and fold it over and then you can make a loop and then you can put a loop over your battery and then stick it to the Velcro. But you get pretty good retention the way that it's set up. So I don't know if that's necessarily worth all the hassle. Also, we need to check our retracts. Now, just be aware when you do, that's so cool. Pretty good wheel movement. The elevators are free. I don't know if a stabilizer is an auto leveling. I have to assume it is because they're moving when I do that. So, yep, it's an auto leveling. Okay, so let's see what happens when I switch modes. Good. Okay, so now we're, we're in stabilized, but not auto leveling. I can't tell, we'll have to play with that in a minute. For now, let's very carefully switch two of these leads. You be careful in case that takes off. Mm -hmm. Not flies at you, but I don't want it to. Mm -hmm. Okay, my hand is in a reasonably safe spot. It would not get cut if it started right now. That's the way you have to treat ESCs. It would probably be a lot smarter to just unplug this for a minute, but I'm like really not going to. Okay, so now careful. Mm -hmm. Throttle cuts off. It's about 20% throttle, throttle cuts on. Okay, so that's good. We have good power. Um, should be plenty of power to fly this little plane. It's not a very big plane, so. Um, you're not gonna need a ton of throttle. Okay, so we'll just tape that back down. Same way we thought, worked out perfect. Okay. All right, so now flipping this over, setting it down on its main wheels. Steerable's working. I don't know if it's going in the right direction. Nope, it's backward. And then ailerons are probably also backward. We're gonna go around where the camera crew can also see. Okay, roll left, roll right, elevator up, elevator down. I can't tell yet, roll left, roll right. Okay, or uh, yaw left, yaw right, we have to switch. Okay, rudder, rudder left, rudder right, rudder left, rudder right. It is working, roll left, roll right. Now, I need to see, okay, I'm gonna test my throttle again, I've tested it. I don't want this to be regular, I want this to be regular, okay? So I'm gonna reverse auxiliary one, okay? So that's regular, roll left, roll right. This is auto leveling. See how it's changing the direction? Mm -hmm. That's weird. We'll have to get the elevators hooked up before we can really establish exactly what's happening. But you can tell we're definitely not in auto leveling. It might be stabilizing up, down, okay, we'll have to play with the settings and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But for now, we have to get our push rods mounted. Okay, so now push rods, the push rods are obviously going to uh, go into one of these holes and I want these to be somewhat square. Where did the instruction manual end up? All right, so I'm just noticing something too. We did not see any instructions on which hole to put it in, so I guess I'm just gonna have to assume that we're going into the outside hole. Ow, poked myself. All right, so let's see how far off we are. They did not give us a place for aligning. So I'm gonna be looking at these markings here. If you could come over here, then you could mark. You see how it's kind of like up so far or not so far from that line. I'm thinking about that as a reference point. And also you see how I put that in? That's not good. That needs to be the other way. That needs to go the other way, I think, on this plane. Normally it's not super critical, but this is reaching down. And so I wanna actually get, ooh, that's gonna be awkward. 
Ooh, maybe I won't be able to do that. That would be a bummer. Oh, got it, okay. You see now that's gonna allow for clearance better. So I did the same thing over here. I went backward on this one too. So I'm gonna walk that back out. I'm gonna come back under like this and just rotate it in. That was a lot easier that time. I can't tell that one doesn't wanna spin at all for me. It's really stiff. All right, so let's just use this as our basis. I have no clue where center is. The instructions don't talk at all about this. It's like they leave out all the instructions on the elevator, but they talk about the ailerons, which really are not that big a deal, and it's more subjective than anything if you ask me. See this? I guess I'm just gonna try to go in alignment with the wing. I don't, I don't know what else to do. Mm, okay. Mm, okay. Do you have any other tips? Like, do you wanna tell me if it's aligned? You think that's level? That's pointed up, like that's gonna pull the nose up, right? I'm going in line with the wing, right? Oh man, that's hard to tell. I think I'm trying to split the difference between the bottom of the servo and that gray line. That's probably about as, but about as good as we can do. I honestly am not sure if there's a better option. And then this tool, as usual, doesn't quite really get in here the way I want it to. Yeah, yeah, that's like really hard. Oh, is this the kind that you have to have one way or the other? I think it might be. Crap. Some of these ball, this might have to be the other way. So I have to go another half a turn. Let's double recheck. Yeah, I, I'm not 100% sure. This is just going to be a guess and check sort of thing, folks. Well, it went on good that way. Okay, I guess in this case, I normally don't do this because it's a lot. I think I'm going to mark, I'm going to actually mark my screwdriver to get a reference point. And if I mark the screwdriver, then that reference will give me the ability to replicate this at least. So I'll come in here so I'm nice and flat. I'm gonna hold this right there. Chris is wanting to fall on me. I said, I don't have three hands. I'm just gonna mark right there. Okay, so that blue mark is my center. So now I'm gonna come over to the other side of the plane and I'm gonna use that as a reference on where I want this elevator to be. Then I'm gonna see how far off I am. Okay, so I gotta, I gotta run this thing out. Why don't you go to the other side so they can actually see. Oh man, that thing is on there. It's like it's glued on. Okay, so you guys see what I'm talking about right there? So once I get that where it's supposed to be, it's, it's one tip on me. So I'll put this on just so it kind of holds it in position. Once that sort of holds it in position, then I can brace it with my finger. And I'm just going down engaging. See, I need to go down. I need to bring this up, which means I need to, if I want to bring this up, I need to go out another half a turn. The last F14 I built was really challenging to do this step too but it was not a fatty. Okay, so I've got that lined up so it's like right at the center, okay? I don't, could you see that? Could you see that? You can't see your blood out on the side. Here, I'll see if I can get it for us. Okay, so you guys see what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to line up this blue mark. The face of the screwdriver is flush with the bottom of that surface there. And I'm lining up with the tip of the control surface. So now hypothetically the elevator will be even on the left and the right, which is critical. If it's not even, you're screwed. 
Oh man, I don't know if those landing gear are gonna clear that missile. I guess I'm gonna have to try that right now. Did it hit? It bumped on that side, the side so towards it's... me. Hmm. That's exactly what I was afraid of. And you know what? It's because the glue was letting it fall down. Watch. Now it clears. Mm -hmm. It's because it was falling down just a hair. So I'm just wondering if one option would be to try to re-get that wing in there because there's a little bit of gapping. The other option would be if I pinned it. I've done that before and it's worked well in the past, but I don't know if I want to pin it. Also, now we can check our elevator for, for direction of travel. It is incorrect, so I'm gonna go back into servo setup, travel, reverse elevator. Go up, go down, roll left, roll right, yaw left, yaw right, yaw left, I can't see very good, yaw right. Boy, there's a lot of hesitation at the end of the stroke. Okay, throttle cuts on, elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll right, yaw left, draw right. Okay, so every surface is working. Now I need to see if they're gonna correct the correct way. So when I yank up the back of the plane, I want the elevator to go up. Nope, it goes down, that's gonna induce a dive. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about how to fix this. And this is outlined right here if you guys are looking for gain and direction adjustment, it's right here, okay? Now I already know how to do this. You basically go one direction, is gonna increase the gain. One direction is gonna decrease the gain. And uh, I think that I need a super dinky screwdriver for this. It did come with a super dinky screwdriver, which is over here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually put the canopy on so that it kind of contains everything. Oh no, look what happened. When I was working, that black paint got chipped up because I had it resting on there. Mm. Okay, well that sucks. Now you guys can learn from my screw up and not do that on your plane. Did I just break the gear door? I just broke the gear door, are you kidding me? Okay, so put your canopy on, that's rule number one. Rule number two, don't break your gear door. I don't think I broke it, I just think I popped it out. Yep, there it goes, and there it goes. Okay, so we're fine. Well, at least it didn't break. All right, so in order to adjust the stabilizer, I can be able to do that with the canopy on. I don't know why I decided I want the canopy all of a sudden. Okay, so you have to turn the correct axis. This antenna can go wherever it wants. This does not need to be mounted, but it, and it probably won't be on this plane. Okay, so elevator needs to go the other direction. So one direction is gonna make it correct more of the same. I want it to be the same, but the other direction. So I'm just gonna go back or past 90. Now look at the elevator. As I lift the back, it's gonna go up. Yep, goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down, okay? Now I'm gonna turn that all the way up and show you what it looks like. Okay, remember we're gonna lift, it's gonna go up. Up, down, up, down, up, down, okay? And then I'm gonna back that off to about half. You know what, can I use the regular long screwdriver, red one, there you go. Man, the head's too wide. That's what I was afraid of. So you have to use the provided one unless you have a really dinky screwdriver. Now, let's look at the roll axis. So roll, roll, roll. I don't see it going in the right direction. So I'm gonna go to aileron, which is this one, and I'm just gonna go back opposite, and I'm gonna go all the way. Now when I lift this wing, I want it to go up. Ready? Up. Now watch the other wing, up. Now down, 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 okay? So that's going the right way. And then yaw axis, which would be only the landing gear, the nose gear. This one's the one that's confusing. It's a little bit harder to tell um, what the yaw axis should be doing just because the nature of this. Now, this also has an adjustment. Come here and let's, there's a screwdriver. Uh, you can undo this ball joint and take that out and then spin this in or out. But in my experience, sometimes it's easier to just try to adjust the set screw. But it depends on the, it depends on the style. 
So I'm gonna come in it like this and see if I can get that loosened. Oh man, that's gonna be terribly difficult. I loosened it. And you see how I just straightened the wheel? That did not work well at all. I think that set screw I don't know if that's a 1.5 millimeter. Probably a 1.5 millimeter is a set screw on the landing gear. I'm gonna see if I can release it and spin the nose gear. Because I don't wanna give up all my trim. Okay, so I released. Nope, that's not releasing. I've had that happen before too. Okay, that, nope, not releasing. Not even gonna be able to do it. Okay, well, I guess that's that then. The only other option would be to get in here and mess with the nose gear in the trim or take out that linkage or take off that control horn to make some course adjustments. You see what I'm talking about, guys? It goes further one way than the other, but it does look like it gets you there. That is weird at the end of the throw. You see that, how it slows down? So I don't know, that might be something with the Pulsar, but I'm struggling to test that. So I'm gonna try again by looking closer. It is going the right way, I believe. It is going the right way, I think. Let's turn it all the way up. So this would be the rudder access. Ooh. Okay, so that's all the way up on rudder. When I point this toward camera crew, it should go toward camera crew. Yep, toward me, toward me. Yep. Wait, shouldn't it be going the back? Or shouldn't it be going the other way? Nose gears always screw me up. When I have rudders, I can do it all day long, but nose gears, I have to think. If I start pivoting this way, I want the nose gear to go the opposite way, to counter that move, not turn toward me. So it should be opposite. Yep, so it should be a hundred. So are you showing what I'm doing in here? because I don't think they're gonna get the point if you don't show this. You see how this is pointed all the way over? So it's turned all the way up. Now I'm gonna turn the volume all the way down. Now there's no correction. At zero degrees, there's no correction. And then all the way down, it's gonna correct the other direction, okay? At maximum amplitude. So this is an amplitude and direction adjustment. All the way one way, no change all the way the other way. So amplitude 100%, 0%, minus 100%, 0%. Okay, does that make sense? It's a turn pot. You're only allowed to go this way to this position. We went from all the way over here to all the way back. Now, when I pull this toward me, it should turn toward camera crew. Yep, and then when I turn toward her, it should come toward me. Yep, so it's resisting the direction of environmental impact notwithstanding me moving the stick. Now, when I move the stick, it goes that way. When I move the stick, it goes that way. So it does what we want, but then it doesn't encourage the environmental impact to continuing its effect. So let's look at the elevator again. Elevator's gonna go up when I lift up the tail. Up, down. Now, these ailerons are not like level, okay? You see how this isn't level? So I think this is where we can press and hold the calibrate button, right? For three seconds. One, two, three. Okay. Now we're gonna just leave it. Okay, so it's, it's, it is where it is. Now, when I switch my modes, that's doing something else, and that's also doing something else. I don't know what something else is exactly. Let's try flipping it. So that's level, that's trying to bring the nose up, that's trying to bring the nose down. Now when I roll, the ailerons slowly are coming to the point where they can't go any further, and then it's gonna go quick to the other side. Okay, flip it upside down, trying to find the quickest route to level, okay? So that's good, that all makes sense. And then in terms of yaw authority, when I move it toward the window, it should go toward the other side, okay? Yep. Yep, okay, so that's doing what it should be doing, and it's auto-leveling. So this would be like our auto-leveling. This is probably also auto-leveling, I assume. This is just stabilization. 
Now, there may also be a factor of amplitude adjustment for master gain adjustment. I don't know how that works on this one yet because I've never done it. Flight modes. So is there a master gain? Do you see anything about gain, like master gain? Because I mean, obviously we have gains here, but ordinarily when I use a stabilizer, I want a stabilizer to also then be commanded to be all the way up or all the way down throughout the entire range for both, or excuse me, all three of the axes in this, in this case, just two um, for flight control surfaces. So I'm gonna just go to like 50% 50, 50 cause I have no way of backing this off. 50% and then 50%. Okay, so now let's just confirm all the control throws. Elevator's up, aileron's up, aileron's up. Rudder or nose gear should go toward my right arm when I turn it, yep, it did. Okay, so all the controls are going in the correct direction and the amplitude is approximately 50% of the throw, okay? So whatever we're allowed, we took half of it. So that's either a good move, an incredibly intelligent, or it's a terrible move. Now, when I do that, there's nothing. So the middle setting is off, good. So we have stabilization, off, and auto leveling. Let's talk about audio vents real quick, because I think this, given the fact that it's a pulsar I'm not used to, I wanna have an audio vent to tell me what's happening. Clearing the timer. So how do we do an audio vent? You go to audio event, switch changes, add new sound event. Okay, switch D. Zero is not gonna be silenced. Zero is gonna be normal, which is stabilized. And there's one in the middle-ish area. Just see if you see it. And it's not AS3X, it's like AS3X. Gyro, initialize gyro game position. Hmm. Gyro, yeah, you could say that. I'd rather have like stabilizer. Mm -hmm. Be cool if they put them in alphabetical order. Stabilize Stabilized mode. mode. Okay, then we can have normal or off. Off is toward the bottom, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then off. And then this one's gonna be auto leveling. So I think that one's down there by safe. Safe, of course, sensor aided uh, flight envelope is auto leveling in the spectrum environment. So it's basically the name they gave it. So it's a self level. Which, as far as I'm concerned, I could just put it to say AS3X and safe because that's what I understand it to be. But I don't mean to be misrepresentative to you guys that are watching this video uh, in regard to what, what we used for settings and style of equipment. I really do not like this ordinance. It's making me nervous. I feel like the only way I'm gonna be able to do this and feel confident that it's not gonna break free on me would be to pin it with something. Or alternatively, maybe just glue this up also, you know, because I feel like it's just going to come down. I feel like I wish it would have had just a glue point so you could glue the sidewander up there. I like them. I think it's kind of cool, but I don't think it's necessarily going to be a great fit. Okay, so. You know what? I'm just going to change it. I'm just going to make it say AS3X, right? Because I'm going to know what that means, even though it's not AS3X. It's the mode. That's what it really shouldn't say. Off. Mode. Off. Self -level. Nice. Okay. Cool. Now, now we can go in and adjust our trims, but look at our trims. 
why the heck in off mode is that not where it was? Stabilized mode. Well, now it's sitting there pretty much perfect, isn't it? Is it on? Yeah, it's definitely on. on. Stabilize mode. Uh, I don't really know how to explain that. Okay, so let's talk about amplitude. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to go into monitor mode. So let's show the people this here. Click, excuse me, just go over one to the right and you can see in our case we're on auxiliary one. Stabilize. See how it's minus 100, off, self-level self -level is in you know the plus mode Stabilize. and the minus, okay? So it's, it's got nothing to do with the position of the switch. It's got to do with how you set up the position of your switch to respond, okay? So I'm gonna push this up as well. In fact, I wonder if it would make sense to just, we could pin that and then that would hold it in position too. I'm just afraid that's gonna get ripped off the first time we fly anyway. But anyway, my whole thought is, we'll gain change if the auxiliary one channel has more amplitude, more amplitude. Okay, so here's how we can test that theory. So servo setup, travel, reverse, speed, and absolute travel. Of course you do absolute travel, but I just wanna do travel. So auxiliary one, now watch this. I'm gonna just do something that I can replicate relatively easy. Um, and I'm gonna be in stabilizer mode. So now listen, click at 100. Are you showing what I'm doing? You see this? I'm just moving this up and down. You don't need to see that. See this? See how it says 100? Whoops. I hit my gear. I don't hear any difference, do you? No. Then it stops. Okay, so some stabilizers act according to the absolute position of the pulse width modulation. So for instance, on some stabilizers, you have an on mode, you have an auto leveling mode, you have an off mode. And then anything between zero, which is off, and stabilizer has to do with amplitude as well. And then anything between off and full auto leveling would be full auto leveling after a certain period, but then stabilizer amplitude as well. So I've seen that before on some stabilizers, not this particular stabilizer. So it's possible uh, that there is, there's an S bus in and then rudder out. So really that's the only choices. There is no other additional inputs that I know of. So I believe we have the setup as good as we can. Now we need to check CG before we make a decision on if we're gonna try to glue those sidewinders up on the bottom because the wind is definitely kind of variable. So I hate to fly a plane then crash it just because it's variable. Okay, so CG marks right here. I don't even have to mark it, that's super nice. Here. And I'm gonna test it with a gear down. And of course I need to put the canopy on. Okay, so it's tail heavy right now. Well, good thing we have a 3200 in there but that's as far forward as I can do that. And I guess I'm just gonna push it in there a little further. Good lordy lord lord. Um, see, this is case in point why I don't do Velcro because the Velcro is now in the wrong position. And I can't put it there that way anyway. I'm gonna have to cut that foam out. So, what are we gonna use to cut the foam? Probably an X-Acto knife, right? Probably. X-Acto knife. Okay, so we'll just take about, I'll we'll call it a quarter inch on this side. Of course, that's gonna take some of the structural integrity out of it. And that's just the way it's gonna be because I don't really know how else you would do it. Really disappointed that that paint come off so easy but it's not the end of the world because I'm going to go touch it up right now with a marker anyway. Keep in mind, black markers are usually a pretty good match, but sometimes they're more blue than they are black. And so one tip is if you get one of these giganto fat markers, they tend to fatty for the fatty. Sometimes they tend to be a little bit darker, like a little truer black. Oh, that did good. Mm -hmm. 
Now, also you could use vinyl electrical tape and really get some good results on matching the black color too, because then it'd be like a flat black, but it's gonna wanna peel on you. Okay, so now I can bring this battery forward. Now, the first time I crash, that battery is gonna careen through the nose of the plane and just destroy it. Okay, that's a long ways up, by the way. Okay. I love that they marked the CG for me. Oh yeah. Okay. I love it. The CG's marked. Oh, actually, we'll mark the battery position as well. This is something we've come to find is a very useful thing to do. So I'm gonna mark here and like here and uh, probably here and then here and then here so you can really see it. And I'm gonna say 3,200, 3,200. 4S and then I can see it from outside and then the arrow denotes the direction the wires go and that just sticks right down on the velcro so it'll make it easy but boy that is an ugly ugly wiring job really really bad probably one of the worst we've had ever In a long time, except for maybe the F16 from E-Flight the 70 millimeter F16 had terrible wiring so did the first the first Viper jet was terrible because it had the same exact problem the, F7, uh, the 70 millimeter F16 did. And that is there's just like nowhere for the wires. Okay, so now that we have the canopy on, we have everything set, throttle cuts on, everything's tested. I wanna flip this over. You know what? I'm just gonna, just for grins and giggles, I wanna try one more thing. I wanna see if the top channel doesn't, it's not hooked to anything. It can't do anything. I was gonna see if the gain channel would do anything that we've had in the past, but of course that's not hooked to anything. So that would be stupid. All right, I wanna try one more thing before we get ready to fly, obviously, would be this. Well, now why, I'm in stabilized mode, why is the ailerons not level? Not stabilized mode, it's fine. Auto leveling, I expect that. Mm -hmm. That is weird. I guess we're gonna have to see how it flies. This Pulsar is making me nervous. Here, looks good. Waiting for the sequencer to close the doors. Anytime you're ready. Nice job, looks good. This makes me nervous. I do not like the way that's working and we're gonna do something about it right now and it's gonna be super easy and it's probably worth your copying this step. I'm gonna use some toothpicks and possibly pair of needle nose pliers and just maybe a touch of glue. What do you think? I liked your idea about gluing them for sure, just on that. Just here? Yeah. I was thinking if we glued them and then I could stick this in just to pin it. I wonder if maybe I should just pin it. Not, well, I don't know. I'm just, I'm always torn on permanence of glue, especially on ordnance. That kind of kills me, you know? It's white on white though. In term, you're not gluing to paint. Well, I can use, I can use this and it won't be a problem. It just needs a little. You could use CA too. Bit. CA would be better on something like this. It's just, I never have the CA up here and I'm too lazy to go get it. Let's check the control authority. Oh, that's so perfect. It looks really cool. I mean, it's weird. It's just like, it shouldn't be, but it is. It's like really cool. And yet it should be like longer and more amazing, but it's like really still fun. I love it. Um, I did not like that build. That was a pain. Yeah, and I'm actually like 15% on my phone, so it took us a little well, bit that's of great. time. That's great. Okay, so just a little bit of glue on that outside one, and we're not even gonna like spread it out or anything. We're just gonna go in here and pin it like lengthwise because it's super easy to get at this angle. Okay. That for sure will hold, okay? So then same thing on the other side, we're just gonna like literally pin this in. It's not like the glue would never hold. It probably will be fine after a day or two, um, but I just don't, I don't wanna wait. I don't wanna throw caution to the wind on that because I don't feel like, I wanna lose a plane because I crashed it into a wall. I don't wanna lose a plane because the stupid uh, ordinance pack caused it to crash into a wall. Okay, so I'm gonna go like this. Gotta kind of pivot that a little bit. Just make sure I'm aligned. There just wasn't a very deep pocket to receive, you know what I mean, 
on this plane. I just didn't feel like it was super obvious if you had the alignment right. Yeah. And other times we seem to get pretty distinct feedback on whether or not you have things aligned right. Now this little screwdriver, I hate having to find those suckers. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do something that I should have done on other planes in the past. I'm gonna open my landing gear. Well, I gotta make one cut first. Side cutters will probably work perfect for this. What'd be even better would be like ultra sharp scissors. Because I gotta cut these pins that I designed in here now. So watch this, I'm gonna cut this, I'm gonna push into the foam and cut. And then I'm gonna put my finger under here and hopefully I don't push it all the way through. See? So now it's hidden. Same thing here, I'm just gonna come in here and clip this. And then I'm gonna take this and put my finger underneath so I've got something to press against. Oh yeah, golden. Perfect, guys. That should work really nice. It's, it's a little bit tempting to pin it again, but to be honest, I feel like the original glue is actually pretty good. It's just that it was allowing the whole package to droop in. So you definitely don't want the package to droop. What? So what I was gonna say about this little screwdriver, that's a pretty cool gear sequence. Because I don't wanna find this stupid thing, I'm just gonna stick it right there. Okay, now I don't have to find it. Yay, it's done. That was actually more terrible than I thought it was gonna be. I mean, I don't want you guys to mishear that because you know, like we tend to make mountains out of molehills here on Brinefield RC, or more importantly, I do. And at the end of the day, I think this plane is probably gonna be a pretty high quality plane. Like it feels like it's good construction. It's just more along the lines of, I feel like sometimes when you have the smaller manufacturers putting these things together, they don't have as many resources or maybe the, um, the same know-how that they might have at a bigger factory that's doing a larger order. Uh, again, these are sort of presumptuous comments, but I do believe it's true. If you buy from the bigger brands, part of the reason that you end up with an easier assembly sometimes is just for the simple fact that you know that company knows that big brand has deep pockets, they're gonna be coming back, they're gonna be buying more. And not only that, they're gonna be getting big orders for a lot of stuff. And so they're gonna basically go out of their way in China to make a better finished product. It's not like they're paying more or they're getting a better deal or anything like that. I mean, I'm sure some of that comes into play, but at the end of the day, let's say you're taking an order at your company. So let's say you're taking an order at your company for uh, 5,000, uh, lawnmowers, you know, that's a pretty huge order. And, you know, you're gonna set up your workforce to be able to manage that. Uh, so earlier I was saying, you know, like you might get a better deal or something like that with, or you're gonna make a better finished product. Well, I think what's gonna happen more, it's not like it's an accidental, it's, it just happens because you have more time with the same staff making the same item. So that's kind of what I'm getting at with this is with, some of these airplanes we deal with, I think the bigger brands, it's not that they necessarily deliver an especially different engineered product. It's just that the engineered product is assembled at the factory by people that have done it more times. Mm -hmm. And so they're jigging and they're, you know, they're, they're processes that they have to do to go from raw materials to finished product ends up being necessarily better. And also if you make that same finished product for several different revisions, it's obvious you're gonna resolve some of the conflicts you had from revision one to revision seven or whatever it is. And even though they only call them V2 or V3 or whatever we're up to on a lot of the FMS lines, for instance, there's probably a lot more revisions than we know about. And there's small corrections that get made on you know, components or maybe sometimes they get bad deliveries from their vendors. So anyway, these are the things I think about here on Brian Phillips RC. I talk about it. So anyway, we are ready to fly this thing. The wind is sort of calmed down. Actually, our phone died. So we had to remember what we were talking about. And so my apologies if that seems a little disjointed, but we don't wanna leave you hanging. So that being said, this plane went together. It was, I would say that it was kind of a pain to build. Um, I don't think that means it's a bad plane. We have built planes in the past that are bad planes that are hard to put together. I don't think this one's bad. I don't know if it's gonna fly good. I'm a little bit concerned it's gonna fly badly because of the nature of its short 
stature and I, I think it's gonna definitely translate to difficulty flying. But they did mention that in the instructions and I don't think we're gonna pull any punches on this one. If it flies good, I'll be very happy because it's super cool and it's just, it's kind of weird. Now, obviously, uh, I don't wanna switch over to this style of plane all the time, but it's, 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 I mean, you have to admit that is super cool. cool. It's fun. Um, and yes, it has a stabilizer and yes, it, I think it would be like way cooler if we actually had, um, some sort of EDFs instead of just having a pusher prop, but I think it would just like greatly increase the weight and the complexity. So almost leaning toward too small in inside the nacelle, um, I think they call them uh, just like a ducted fan, okay? Not an EDF, which is what it is, an electric ducted fan, but I mean just like what they do on flight test where they just put a prop inside that happens to fit. Uh, holds down cost, uh, makes for you know a little bit, little bit cheaper build, but I'm just not sure how, we're not ready for that yet. And I am a little bit nervous about the Pulsar. It's gonna be the first time I've used one. I've noticed some strange behaviors just in our kind of testing. Like when I hold this up, I'm not in auto leveling. I'm in stabilization, okay? And I think it kind of like relearns what the home position is. And then when I lay it down, sometimes I notice that the control surfaces don't quite get back to where I expected they should be. So it makes me a little bit nervous. We're gonna have to shut it off. So throttle cuts on. Elevator up, down, roll left, roll right, yaw left, yaw right. All the control surfaces are right. I think I wanna take off with the stabilizer on. I'm gonna to get to altitude and then I'm gonna try the auto leveling and then I'm gonna see what it's like with it off. I think it's gonna be very difficult with it off uh, because this thing is gonna be pitch sensitive as heck. And yes, we do have the CG perfect as far as I can tell from the manuals recommended CG point. If anything, it's just a hair nose heavy, which is exactly what you want on a potentially volatile aircraft. So hopefully you've picked up a thing or two and it wasn't too frustrating to watch this build, um, but we love that you're here with us here on Brian Phillips RC. We love bringing this stuff to you, this, this you know unique content once in a while. We try not to make it all about unique content because that wouldn't be necessarily fun. Um, but at the end of the day, we love reviewing these planes. That's one of the biggest things we do here on the channel. Obviously, we do cars, we do trucks, we do um, you know, paragliding and farm stuff and land stuff and, and all these different things that interest me and my wife. Um, but at the end of the day, fixed wing radio controlled aircraft is kind of like our bread and butter. That's what we enjoy. The, you know, we do the best. I think we're the best at that. And we hope that you guys enjoyed this footage. And if you want, if you want to buy this thing, we're going to try to figure out a way. We kind of have like sort of like a strange relationship on this one. So we're not sure how that's going to work. Um, normally when you buy these planes, we get commissioned. We haven't really worked out any sort of arrangements with this. We're not affiliates yet, um, but we are trying to figure that out. So it's kind of strange, but at the end of the day, if you want to help support us, the best thing you can do is buy the stuff that we review from the links in the video description below or Navigate over to brianphillipsrc.com, which is just www.brianphillipsrc.com, the exact same name as the YouTube channel, except without the YouTube at the beginning. And you can see all this stuff in a more organized fashion because we do have tons of videos, like 16, 1700 videos out right now. So hundreds of different planes, they're all playlist ordered. If you wanna find something, use the search results, but you have to click on my face and then it will bring you to our channel, the video will start playing, and then you can do the search there and you'll search our specific channel for what it is you're trying to look for. That's one tip. Or you can just go over to brianphillipsrc.com and we'll have it organized in different ways. The camera crew, Megan, my wonderful wife, has been working like crazy on that over the course of the last, what, about six months to a year? Yeah, probably six months. And it's been a lot of work for her, but it's starting to kind of really start to shape up, which is really nice. And uh, you can find the planes, then you can link back to the videos, which will be organized through the playlist there. Um, and then of course you can buy from the links there as well. So anyway, without further ado guys, 3200 4S 30C Smart Pack Gen 1 in this case, so we can have a voltage alarm in, and then the NX8. We have had phenomenal luck with the NX8. Um, in, in terms of quality, it's been great. Strength, it's been great. The only drawback I have found on the NX6 and 8 from my previous DX18 is it's a little bit harder to find the trim. I don't know why. I can't really explain it because if you were to see this side by side with the DX18, 
They almost seem like they're exactly spatially the same, but I've had a lot harder time, especially on the roll axis and the yaw axis. I don't know why that is. I don't know if you guys have had the same scenario. Otherwise, I love the transmitter and I actually really don't have a huge problem with trim. It's just one of those things I've noticed. And then also, I don't like that I had to go up to a bigger battery. I felt like the bigger battery would have made sense from the start. It's kind of an expensive battery. Uh, but the 6000 is definitely something you're going to want to get uh, if you want to fly this for a long time. And if you're anything like me, you don't want to be charging this like once a week or once every two or three days. Uh, I have to charge this thing about once every couple of weeks, but we fly a lot. So keep that in mind. You may not have that same issue. But beyond that, love the NX8. Think it's definitely worth the small premium over the NX6. The NX6, of course, has seven channels, but the 8 gives you lots more features for only a little bit more money. Plus, it's just basically gonna get you through more models. So you're buying a longer period of RC time with the eight versus a six. I feel like the six is gonna be a stepping stone and it's a lot of money for a stepping stone. Just get the ready to fly, then go straight into the eight. If you can afford the 10, go to the 10, you'll buy even more time. We have only run out of channels twice, right? Or is it three times? I think it's twice. I mean, it might be three times now. But either way, I know it's two distinctly. Mm -hmm. It was like a Hangar 9, P50, P50, what's that, P47. P47. And then we ran out of channels on- Something we did flap arounds on recently. Yeah. I can't remember what it was, to be honest, guys. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to cover for anybody here, but I just can't remember. But we did run out of channels and we had to then unassign our master gain. And then later we were able to reassign it once we figured out some other function, which was like an on-off setting. So if you know you're not gonna use the on-off setting for stabilizer, you can just turn AS3X on and leave it on all the time and then make your master gain assignment. Uh, but bearing in mind, we go all through this in the radio setup, to, particularly on this plane, we didn't know the best way to do it. And so hopefully we'll find out that we have plenty of roll authority and we have plenty of elevator authority. And it might actually work really good for televons with these big fully functional, uh, functional stabilators. I think it would look cool. So anyway, guys, without further ado, thanks so much for watching. Definitely uh, smash the like button, click the bell for notifications and come back for more. So much more coming from Brian Phillips RC.